Good afternoon. Welcome to our land use meeting of December the 16th, 2021. We are going to start uh, with the invocation and the Pledge of Allegiance. If you'd stand, please. Is uh, Cindy Lamar here? Yes, right here. Please, come on down. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Father, we thank you for the freedoms in America, that we don't have to have all the answers. I thank you that we can come before you and that you hear our prayer. You hear the cry in our heart for your people and for this land. Our country is in need of your guidance, for your purpose for this day, and for the days in which we live. We need your wisdom for the decisions that will affect the days ahead. We pray for those that are in authority that would seek your counsel and hear your voice. Thank you for those here that are willing to give themselves to serve. I pray a blessing upon each one for the assurance that you are God and there is none beside you. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. You're welcome. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, next is uh, announcements. Ms. Wenzel, any updates to the agenda? Um, yes, Madam Chair, there are a few. Um, we had an update from 1214. Um, I'll just list the agenda item number two was added. County partnership requested by state for acquisition and management of Rattlesnake Key. That was also moved from consent agenda to regular agenda. And then there was also a revised motion put in the packet. Um, item number one, which is L3 partnership Gamble Creek Village plan amendment, the text and map amendment. There were revised maps entered into the update memo. Um, that revision included just a change to the adoption date on the maps that will be attached to the ordinance. Public comment letters were also um, provided and um, a request from the applicant for additional presentation time is also included. The, um, the final ordinances, ordinance 2118 and 2117 are also included in the update packet. And then number three is the clerk's consent agenda dated 12-16-2021, which is attached. And that's it. Thank you, ma'am. All right, we're going to go ahead now to uh, citizen comments, uh, consideration for future agenda items. There's a 30-minute time limit. Each person will be limited to three minutes. If the 30-minute time period has been exhausted, the board will entertain any remaining comments near the end of the meeting with the same three minutes per person. Uh, and I would just mention that we need to make sure that we stay respectful to one another up on this dais as well as down in the audience. So moving right along, I have one card. Mark Vandery. State your name, sir, and you'll have three minutes. How are you today? Good afternoon. Mark Vandery. I'm, I'm fine. Thank you very much. And I would like to thank everybody up on the dais for hearing citizens' comments. I know sometimes I don't seem to appreciate it as much as others, but I know you're all trying to do your best, be keeping an open mind and listening and trying to understand what the citizens are trying to tell you or uh, points we're trying to get across. Um, some more open-minded and listen better than others, but it's all good. I, I would like to... Um, ask the BOCC on future agenda items to consider spending more attention on the central and west parts of Manatee County. Uh, I saw a, a article published in the Sarasota paper a couple weeks back and it was a little bit disturbing. Um, there was a study done that uh, <coughs> 
showed the Sarasota Manatee uh, County area as being the sixth highest in the nation for pedestrian fatalities. And that kind of caught my attention and I'm wondering why that is. I think if uh, more attention was paid to what's going on in the rest of the county, not just in the uh, suburban development areas that the you know Robert Barron land developers are interested in with the uh, District 1 and the District 5, I think uh, some more attention could be paid as well as preserving lands, not just out east in East County, although that's very, very important and near and dear to me because I am a East County resident, but as well as the central and west uh, parts of the county. Um, you know, there's uh, that, that uh, Babcock Ranch uh, preserve development down in, in Charlotte County. Part of their effort is reclaiming lands that it, it wasn't urban development, but they were lands that were uh, used for extensive uh, commercial agriculture and trying to restore them back to their natural states. Uh, I think that's a, a good effort to try to do something like that. In the west part of the counties, there's a lot of vacant areas, a lot of blighted areas. It's not, it's not inexpensive to do but uh, a lot of the time and effort spent in the uh, other parts of the county um, are equally expensive and difficult to do as well. I also noticed that the, although the overall crime rates are, are going trending down uh, in Manatee County, we're still a couple hundred percent above the national average and uh, above the Florida average for violent crimes. I think that some focus needs to be paid there as well. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else from the public want to come forward? I'm assuming that Glenn, he looks like he might be coming down this way. Okay. Shame on you. man. For the record, Glenn Jablina, um, I'm in accordance with the last speaker there as far as sustainability, Babcock Ranch. They're, they're, a, they're a home run, and I think we need to start moving in that direction uh, on that. A couple other things I want to talk about is affordable housing, of course. Um, we don't have any, and we haven't uh, placed any mechanisms to make uh, more affordable housing on a smaller scale. So what I think this, this we need to do is to start looking at the infill lots, some of the infill lots in marginalized areas that are uninhabitable, they're dangerous, they're an eyesore, and there should be a task force set up within the, the county to go out and approach these property owners and say, look, this is an eyesore, you're not living it. Maybe the land was given, maybe the house was given to them by their parents and they died and they don't want to live there. It's in disrepair. They don't have the money to fix it and they're no interest in selling it. So I think we need to, to acquire those properties and, and tell the home, homeowner, say, look, this is an eyesore. Here's what we're going to do. We're either going to fine you $250 a day or we'll give you fair market price for it. And now we have more inventory for affordable housing. That goes into the surplus list for profit builders and nonprofit. And that would increase not only the surplus property that the county is lacking in, uh, but it would certainly increase that. Um, Again, the 25% the, the incentive for affordable housing to the big developers, I don't think they've taken advantage of any of it. I don't think they've built one square foot or taken advantage of the 25%. That incentive, although looks good on paper, doesn't work. So maybe we can increase the incentive or we can uh, move in another direction. I'm not sure. Um, just like this meeting here, we're live streamed. I'm a big proponent of transparency and accountability. I don't know what the big deal is that we cannot live stream or at least record all, all, lay, all meetings, uh, all committees, affordable housing, health, all of those can be set up with a tripod and an iPad and we can, we can live stream it. You go to some of these poor churches and they got a little tripod there with a $200 iPhone and they're live streaming their services to the community. 
If they can do it, why can't we do it? So this pushback that we don't have the resources or the money to do it, I don't buy it. I do it on affordable housing board with, with my crappy little iPhone, so it can be done. And I think you'll, you would stop a lot of friction if you could replay some of the instances at these meetings that would clarify who was in the wrong. And I think you'd be, you'd be mildly surprised. So uh, thank you for your time, and I'll see you in a little bit. Thank you. Anyone else from the public want to come forward on future agenda items? I'm not seeing anyone. Any phone calls, ma'am? Oh, wait, we might have someone coming up. Thank you. Is, my name is Pam Gisbert, and I am here to, is this the time to talk about the Gamble Creek no, ma'am. development? That'll I'm, be coming okay. up shortly. I wasn't sure. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else before we go to phone calls? Okay. Madam Chair, we have one caller. All right, go ahead. Caller 408, please state your name for the record. Yes, uh, Carol Phelps, Mayaka City. Um, on future agenda items, um, one thing that I've noticed in the agenda is that we absolutely have no citizens' comments recorded for the public record. And I believe there's been some issue out there in the public, just the perception, maybe some information that's out there um, in terms of exactly how and the best way for us to communicate our concerns. Now, we all know that in order to get something posted on the agenda, there are certain rules, regulations, and restrictions to make sure that that happens. But there have been many instances where uh, people have submitted public comment, but in following through with that, it's not getting posted on the agenda, and it's not getting posted in a timely manner. And I think that's something that is a reflection of all of us, uh, the citizens, as well as our commissioners. And what I'd like to encourage, uh, there has also been some rumor that uh, Dr. Hopes is making policy in terms of how uh, public comments are handled. But my point of this is that anytime we have an agenda that does not have a single public comment recorded out of 400,000 citizens, we have a problem. And that problem is shared all around. And that means that either people are trying to comment and they're not getting through, and we have had proof of that, or we don't understand the system, or we don't have commissioners that are really getting out there and seeking to involve and inform and educate the public. That's a reflection. So when people make that effort, we've got to encourage it. We've got to facilitate it. We've got to listen. And a lot of times, people cannot make it to these meetings. They could not sit there for six to eight hours. So those public comments are important. Uh, and they're also very important to have posted on the agenda in a timely manner, because we don't all speak the same language. And a lot of times, the way that we learn most of the real information that is not a, uh, 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 as I said the other day, a hieroglyphical, uh, wordy thing, um, we learn more from each other than we are from our county and from our commissioners. So these public comments are the most important thing that we have to exercise the liberties and the rights and responsibilities that we have. And I think it would behoove the commission and Dr. Hopes and county staff to let's really make an effort to pay some attention to those things. Thank you. Because that uh, is important. Ms. Feltz, thank you very much. Are there any other phone calls? No other phone calls? All right, we're going to go ahead then and close public comment. Uh, commissioners, we have one item on consent today, and it is number three, the clerk's consent agenda. Does anyone want that pulled? I'm assuming not, so we'll go ahead. Okay. I think it's odd that it's even there. All right. So what is the pleasure of the board on consent? So move, move to approve the consent agenda. Second. 
We have a motion by Commissioner Serbia, a second by Commissioner Bellamy. I need to open this to public comment. Is that correct, Madam Clerk? Yes, it is. Um, I'm going to go ahead and open this to public comment. Anyone want to come forward before we vote on this item? Not seeing anyone. Any phone calls, ma'am? All right, I'm closing public comment. All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. It's approved unanimously, Madam Clerk. Moving on. All right, I'm going to go to number two. County partnership requested by state for acquisition and management of Rattlesnake Key. Mr. Hunsecker. Thank you, Madam Chairman, members of the board, uh, county administrator, and staff. We're here to present uh, a, a very good news item, I believe, uh, and, and that is that the state has signaled its intention to secure the rattlesnake key and associated parcels for environmental protection. You know, the, this parcel was added in 1996 to the state acquisition program, so this will be its 25th anniversary on the list, not quite as long as Fort Hammer Bridge. Uh, to get to ready for building, but nonetheless, something that the environmental community and the state has recognized as a resource valuable for protection. Uh, the original motion and the original work that we had done leading up to this point had included a proposal for a partnership in a way for a joint management of the property. But the good news is the state has come forward and indicated that they would like to manage the property as a state park in its entirety and uh, looking for a contribution from Manatee County. So, the, the time, time is of the essence with this item because the legislation goes into session before the board convenes again the next time you're here. And so we needed, the, we felt we needed the permission or the authorization for your county staff to uh, negotiate or be prepared to negotiate with the state should that come down relative to cost or, or management details or any other item like that. So the motion has is, is been revised and it's in your packet and, and it's fairly simple. It's authorization for the county to work with the state of Florida for the acquisition of Rattlesnake Key with a local contribution of 10% of the purchase price or $3 million, whichever is less and to be operated with our recognition that it will be operated as a state park uh, with state management and as a passive park to allow for daytime use, uh, camping, hiking, and other, and other functions uh, on the island. This is in keeping with uh, the estuary program's recommendations uh, that came through the Tampa Bay estuary program. That letter is in your packet. This is in keeping with the LMAC discussions we've had for several years and most recently this year on this property. It's certainly in keeping with your comprehensive plan to move in this direction. <coughs> And uh, we congratulate the state of Florida for uh, taking the steps necessary this year to possibly to make this happen. So we seek your uh, support for this motion. Commissioner Whitmore. Okay, I just have a couple questions, Charlie. So um, state representative, I mean, S Senator um, Jim Boyd is um, involved in this, right? I read that somewhere in some of the backup at the port meeting. <laughs> well, y yes. Okay. Uh, yes, he has. Yes, he and he's aware of this, and he's, he's aware that we may or may not do something on this issue, or he's supporting well, us on well, this? Yes. In addition to that, he's, a, he's actually asking that we take okay. some action before the legislative session okay. begins. And I sent an email um, this morning asking uh, staff, was LMAC aware of this? Had they taken any formal action? And I got a, a response from administration uh, saying they're aware. Well, that wasn't good enough, so I called Charlie on my way back from the port and he re reminded me and I forgot this was part of the selling points for the um, environmental lands tax and that was one of the examples and so they have been aware of it and you have discussed it at the meetings correct Charlie that you know of well our LMAC committee has discussed this particular project okay yes. and also we reminded everyone that when they uh, under timing, in essence, uh, when project opportunities came forward that needed a very quick decision, if they were consistent with the direction we've always had for several years that we can uh, move on. Okay, now this $3 million that we're talking about, uh, just what I spoke about the other day, I know we're not committing to anything right now, but do we have uh, money in your reserves or are we going to borrow money already from LMAC and that'll be a decision that we'll make, uh, but we won't make... Uh, we're not taking a loan out for any of this. It'll either come from a loan through LMAC funds, that, that environmental tax, or find it in your reserves. Madam Chair. Uh, 
uh, Commissioner, as you know, we did not levy the environmental lands tax this year. Next uh, year. And so what we have done is we have put in reserves right. funds that are equivalent to the, the net proceeds we would have gotten from the tax. So those funds do not have the same restrictions that the tax would have. In fact, a little over $4 million, uh, oh. we moved from general revenue to put in reserves. So we, we do have funds that have been put into reserves that, are, that would be uh, allowable for this purpose. In the spirit of what all this is about. Okay, right. thanks. Thank you. And, and I might add, it's not unusual in a situation like this where, <coughs> where one community would perhaps benefit more than any other county uh, in a, a, a land transaction like this. It's, it's somewhat similar to Hillsborough uh, River State Park up in Hillsborough County. Uh, and so it's, it's not unusual, but because of the timing, as Mr. Hunziker has said, uh, the, it, 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 the local delegation, at least uh, Senator Boyd, who's been, I think, spearheading this, felt that it would be important to know uh, whether or not uh, the commission be, would be willing to provide some level of match uh, should the legislature move forward. It's my understanding that the funds for this transaction are in the governor's recommended budget. next on the board I got a couple of questions um, so the money the three million up to three million is the money's already there in the budget it's been put aside we put it this, aside so in parks and environment right okay yes ma'am all right and has this already been the paperwork already been turned into the state for this no. project I know it has not well, that's not true. I mean, it had been. It was not submitted. My name was on it. So it, it was not. It was not submitted to the legislature, Madam Chair. Okay, so it, new paperwork will be done, and we'll have the new chairman's name on it. Correct? I'm just asking. I, I want to make yeah. sure. Yeah, I, I, I think. I think this would be. This will be a legislator-led request. It would not be a request from okay, us. Okay. Good. Good. Yeah. Okay. And um, how are people going to get to the island? Do we know any of that? I mean, I'm just curious. How are they going to get there? Pra pra practice has been for many, many generations by boat. And uh, it's a shallow. Uh, there are a lot of shallows around there. So I suggest people look at the tide tables as they approach the island. But uh, <laughs> personal experience. So, similar to Caladesi Park in uh, Pinellas County, Madam Chair. Okay. Well, I was just wondering because it was like, hmm, that's going to be interesting. How are they it's an get adventure there? to get there. Oh, yes, an adventure. That's part of the experience. Okay, sharks. <laughs> Okay, and um, this will be a state park. There will not be any operating expense to the county for this. Is that correct? At this time, no. Uh, what state, do you mean at this time? At this That's time, our understanding. The state, this, our understanding is that there will be a state park. Yes. Okay, because I had talked to uh, Will Robinson and Jim Boyd about this, to, you know, and, and I know the preference was a state-operated park, but then again, I know that first we had talked about or there had been discussion about it being partly run by the county. So yeah. I just wanted to make sure I understood what, what the plan was. Yes, that, that, that's See, it's our understanding yeah. that FDEP, uh, under their parks system, uh, are desirous of it being a state park, both state developing the park, acquire, acquiring the land, developing the park, maintaining the park, and managing the park yeah. as a state park. I don't have a problem with it. I just wanted to make sure I understood what we were doing and why and how and, yes. you know, all that stuff. And, and I might add that the language that we've put in this is specific, that it's a state park, manages a state park, okay. but also providing the uses that we would like to see, which is overnight camping and public access, et cetera. Great idea. I think we should all have to go out there and spend a couple of nights. <laughs> the, the inaugural camping trip with the rattlesnakes. Yeah, yeah I hear that's there are real I rattlesnakes thinking, on there. I want you to them. say that, but <laughs> I'll, be, I'll take I'll my, supply I can't the even get my RV there. Yeah. Can we build a road, please? We'll put it on a barge. I'm kidding. I'll, I'll um, supply the bugs. A ferry. We'll have a ferry <laughs> from the port. Crazy. Commissioner Van Austin Bridge. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so. This originally was on consent agenda, and I'm glad that you caught it. Mm -hmm. I had asked for it to be put on first because I knew that Senator Boyd would be watching and you know, figured it was sort of a time certain if it went first, but it wasn't intended to be on consent. Um, to be clear, Senator Boyd's ask was for $5 million, anticipated purchase price of $30. Um, from gauging from our last, you know, when it was first brought up at that previous meeting, I didn't think that the board had the, 
you know, <laughs> that that was going to that was going to fly. Uh, so Dr. Hopes came up with the idea of doing 10 percent or three, whichever was less. Um, but if the board has the stomach for for five million, that, that was the ask. I feel it's appropriate to at least put that out there to you all. Um, but I just didn't think the board was going to have the stomach for the five. Um, and I was hoping that the county would be able to manage it to ensure public access. But Senator Boyd ensured me that it would be a, like a manned state park and that public access would not be an issue. Um, so, but the state hasn't, as of lately, they haven't. That's not how they've been operating, you know, new state parks. But he assured me that. Uh, at the very high levels, he has had conversations and that this will be a manned state park and that public access will be a certainty. So that's all I wanted to add. Thank you, Madam Chair. Commissioner Servia. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. And I'm so happy to see this on the agenda because I, this is a really important acquisition in the Florida Forever program, uh, just like Emerson Point was, just like others, right? I can't think of it. So uh, I, I hope that the board does support this. My question is about um, restoration. Uh, are, are there a lot of exotics out there? Do, and how will that be an effort that needs to be done annually that the county's involved in, or will it only be the state who's managing exotics? I, I estimate that it's 12 to 18 percent of the total thousand acres of this property approximately is bound up in invasives. And the uh, funding sources for such things to the available to the state of Florida are the Water Management District and uh, also the Tampa Bay Environmental uh, Restoration Fund, uh, TBRF, I think it's called. And uh, those funds are available also because, as you see, the Tampa Bay Estuary Program has endorsed this acquisition and may be in a position to help the state to, in their management dollars. I do not anticipate Manatee County being asked to contribute to that restoration expense. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Satcher. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Charlie, last year um, at this time, uh, this seems a little bit de like deja vu to me. Um, last year at this time, was there a large monetary request brought to us at the 12th hour before a state delegation? Uh, not for an environmental purpose. Was it the deep well change? You're thinking? Um, Last year at this time, uh, the environmental request rotated around uh, a clam and oyster demonstration project in the river. Sure. Maybe, maybe um, could have sworn it was you that did the presentation last time also. Maybe it's a different time of year because of the way the uh, schedule was falling for the legislature, but... Um, you know, I think it was a really solid decision that I'm reminded of, but the situation of the decision was much less than ideal, and that was that the, the board with, uh, you know, three new members uh, was brought a $6 million proposal to agree with the state to address Piney Point. And we had to vote on it that day because otherwise it was going to be late to the state legislature and we were going to lose our chance at get being matched by the state. That was our only shot, six million then or nothing. Now, of course, we know, first of all, I can always look back at that vote when I talk to citizens and say the very first time I was allowed to make a vote that involved Piney Point, I made it a huge priority and not only that, but I made a a significant financial um, dedication on a in a very uh, tight time frame and we all did we voted in that and that passed now we know that the rest of the story is that it was you know 20 years too late 10 years too late at least um, and that before that six million and the state's match ever was able to come to play to to fruition we had the, uh, you know, the situation at Piney Point. Yes. And, uh, and so now what was, you know, a, the six million is obviously well beyond that, going to cost way more. Um, but I am not, a, I'm not excited to be put in this situation again when it seems like we've known about this for a while that this would be asked of us. And I'm sure there's things behind the scenes that we may not know. Oh, I'm sure. 
Um, maybe people are making decisions outside of this board. Um, but it does seem strange that this was not told. I don't, I don't see, I, I can't predict anyone or very few people at this board, on this board, unless there was just a huge budgetary concern. Um, but otherwise, I don't see anyone voting against this or at least, you know, championing the calls to not get this environmental land set aside. So then it begs the question, why? Why weren't we in part of the decision? Why weren't we informed of it on time? Why weren't we briefed on it before it went to state? Why weren't we getting calls immediately when the information became available that this property was ready, the state was ready to move on it? I'm not asking you to answer that question in front of everyone right here. But I just want to, I always try to let everyone know where I stand for future as well. I don't like it when we're not willing to put things in front of people for them to see and inspect. Uh, what if there was a, you know, a citizen comment or a citizen group that could make a very strong case why this was not the best use of our funds and why there was something else available that was much better for the county? Maybe that doesn't exist, but if it does exist, I think they had 24 hours to get their uh, stuff in a row, or, or, or maybe it's been a week, but why not the full amount of time that we've known when we're being asked to commit three million? The other thing that I would like to say is that, uh, you know, if one year, which is not long, um, but if one year of experience has taught me anything, um, and life, is that we need to get it in writing if it's important. So are we going to have it in writing that people are going to have access to this island? <clears throat> if we commit $3 million of taxpayer money, are we going to have it in writing that the taxpayers are going to be able to access the island and enjoy it? Do you know? That one I would like it answered in front of everyone if we know. Those conditions are always incorporated in a management plan that the state uh, drafts holds a public hearing or a public meeting on uh, with an advisory group, and uh, that management plan is put into place. There's also a management plan that is introduced when the Acquisition and Restoration Council, um, and in this case the governor, uh, puts forth funding for and makes a decision to buy the property. That has not taken place yet. Uh, so there's an opportunity to ensure that in the document preparation uh, that public access is assured. C Commissioner, uh, the reason why I put the language in there is just for that very purpose, that if there is no written commitment in the management plan that meets the criteria that you have in the motion, which you can amend to put ever, whatever requirement you want, then there is no local match. I appreciate that. And, and what I would say is, especially the, 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 the Florida Forever program, you have communities all around the state that are lobbying the governor, usually the governor first, for it to come out in the governor's recommended budget and get his buy-in, as well as the legislature. So oftentimes, you don't know whether there's a commitment from the governor's office or a commitment from a, 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 uh, a, a ranking legislator who's going to carry it until you're, you're, you're right up to those, those sort of final hours. And, and you know, while I was not, you know, immediately involved throughout this process, I believe that is one of these situations where uh, there was uh, effective uh, lobbying and negotiations with, with DEP and the governor's office to make Rattlesnake uh, key a priority. Uh, and the governor's recommended budget didn't come out until Friday. Uh, and so did not feel there was enough time to put it on the meeting Tuesday because we had a very full agenda. So. Uh, we're, we're trying to accommodate our, our local senator as best we can. Uh, I did want to make note of I was aware of the $5 million request. I met uh, numerous times with uh, Deputy County Administrator and CFO Brewer, and $5 million would pretty much wipe out uh, Mr. Hunziker's uh, reserve account for parks and environment. Uh, and since we've already seen some some needs uh, around certain parks that uh, you know costs look a little bit higher, I just was not comfortable recommending to you uh, that we uh, zero out that reserve fund for this project. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, thank you, Mr. Administrator. So, 
you know, the way our uh, our system is set up, there's a lot of uncomfortable uh, conversations that uh, don't really get to be had um, behind closed doors, unfortunately. Uh, they happen right here. And so, um, so you know, the, the uncomfortable conversation is uh, I genuinely hope that everybody's just putting their dead level best to get as much contribution from citizens and from commissioners um, as they possibly can, especially on something as important as this, with as much money involved, with land involved, environment involved, coastline involved. I'm hoping that everybody's doing their best to get people involved so that their input is heard and so that it's very transparent uh, for the citizens um, and, the, and the policy makers that they've elected. And uh, it would be, and, I, and I'm not pointing any fingers because I there's so much that goes on um, that I just have to, you sometimes wonder, you know, who's driving different decisions. Um, so, and I, I'm going to, as I said, I'm not going to point any fingers as to who that might be, um, but it does seem like uh, commissioner input on this was deliberately um, avoided um, to the point that the committee that's already a part of this it doesn't have the amount of commissioner input that had already been proposed and spoken of. And I bet briefings took place about that. I don't think I was in on one of those briefings. I don't think that was a subject for me. I bet communications took place on that between um, others involved. But surely I'm wrong. Surely there's no way that something like that would be deliberate or that uh, people on this board would deliberately uh, want to, you know, um, take another commissioner's uh, input or, or say or part in a decision away from them when that part had been voted on and decided on publicly in a meeting. So I'm sure that that is not what happened. Sure, it wasn't in, uh, commissioner driven or otherwise. And uh, with that, I'll yield back to the chair. Thank you. Commissioner Whitmore. And Madam Chair, could we refrain from the talking and laughing and stuff uh, when the commissioners make comments? Commissioner Satcher, this is how it works. Uh, the state legislature. Madam Chair. I'm still Wonder where, I haven't called a name. I didn't oh, call so your you name. Out. You've let, it's only fair. No, I wasn't talking about, I was talking about you, Madam Chair. Me? You're the one that's laughing, yes. <laughs> I didn't say it. Very distracting. Trust me, it was hard Entirely not to. Can I keep Shh. talking? But it wasn't you, Mr. You, Commissioner You Sanger. can, but I specifically and deliberately have not called names. Um, so good. perhaps that might be a good idea for all of us. But you're, I, you're your own commissioner. You can make your own decisions. Thank you, and I just, thank I, you. I, I apologize for, for the interruption. No. It wasn't you, Commissioner Satcher. Okay. It was if Commissioner Baugh. If it was me, Baugh. I'm not going to apologize. Thank you. But I have okay. the same rights you do. So would you please move ahead with your comments? Um, if you'd let me. Okay. Thank you. Um, this is how it works, Commissioner Satcher. The state legislature, the get ready to go to section, um, the governor, I guess, puts this out, and now they want buy-in from the county. This happens all the time. We went up to one year to see Senator Gruters. We're in the room. He goes, you guys haven't asked for any money. We said, well, we have. And he goes, why not? So we brought up uh, the $10 million for 44th, and we got it. That was not on our legislative platform. We got it two years in a row. So he said, you guys got to come back and ask for, for some money, and we did. And I think three of us were in that room when that happened. So uh, this happens. It looks like the governor, um, and if you didn't support the tax, but I did, and it was in the educational stuff. This was an example of what we would use for the tax, not that we were going to. But this was an example. So um, it looks like if this governor supports it and, and Boyd supports it, and we, we have the funding in our tax, we know the citizens supported something like this because they voted for it 71%, then we should at least look at it. But it was in the educational material, and that's why I called Charlie because I've been hearing about Rattle State. It's actually Commissioner Van Ostenbrook has brought it up a couple of meetings, but uh, do, talking about it, but 
I didn't know it was going to come to fruition or that Boyd was um, serious and the governor's budget came out Friday. So, you know, unfortunately, this will happen next year and the year after and the year after. It's This is what happens when our legislators get up there and they need something from the counties. Commissioner Servia. Thank you, Madam Chair. I want to thank Senator Boyd for the hard work that he has done quickly to try and acquire this important piece of land. And so I move authorization for the county to work with the state of Florida for the acquisition of Rattlesnake Key with a local contribution of 10% of the purchase price or $3 million, whichever is less, to be operated under the state park system as a state park with daytime public access and provisions for camping and other passive recreational activities. Second. All right, we have a motion by Commissioner Servia, a second by Commissioner Van Ostenbridge. I could have called that one too. So I've still got a couple of commissioners. Commissioner Van Ostenbridge, you're next on the board. Was there anything? Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I just wanted to uh, address uh, Commissioner Satcher that I did speak with um, Senator Boyd about this several times, but this is not a commissioner-driven initiative at all. This is entirely Senator Boyd's project. He is his idea, his brainchild, his he's spearheading this. Uh, he is simply asking us to pitch in and help. Um, that's all the only ask from us. And it has been brought up a couple times. Commissioner Bob, Commissioner Bob brought it up uh, at a meeting, and then I brought it up. I don't think it was our last meeting. I think it was the meeting before. Um, it was the last bit. I can't remember, but I brought it up recently again just to let everyone know that it would be coming before us. Um, so it has been brought up a couple times. No presentation, obviously, or you know, detail until today. Um, but we didn't have much to present or detail because it wasn't commissioner driven. Um, it was entirely driven by our state senator, and this is just uh, a sign of support. Hopefully, um, that's all, Madam Chair. Thank you. I'm next on the board. Uh, just a couple of comments. Uh, first of all, the $10 million for 44th Avenue, Commissioner Whitmore, that was really due to um, uh, President Galvano, President Senate President Galvano, who I believe that Joe Gruders carried the bill, but it was actually for him, uh, which we already knew. Uh, the second thing is, uh, Commissioner Van Ostenburg, yes, sir, I did bring it up, and I brought it up the day after uh, Senator Boyd had called me in reference to this, and I knew nothing about it. So I'm glad that you had conversation, but unfortunately, I think you must have been the only one, you and our county administrator and Charlie, that had had discussions on it. All I knew is I found out that there was paperwork that Jim Boyd had that had my name on it. And I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. Yes, sir. Um, second of all, uh, I am totally going to support this, not because of the way this has been handled here at the county. I think it's terrible. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to support it because of Jim Boyd and Will Robinson. They have been great partners with Piney Point. Had it not been for Senator Boyd and, and, and uh, Representative Robinson, I, you know, I, I don't know that we would be where we are financially right now with the state on Piney Point. So I think that's really important, and we are good partners. Uh, this money that has um, – that where I'm assuming, I'm hearing correctly, this is where the money's going to come from, is the LMEC, the fund uh, for the conservation that, that we're doing. Is that not correct? No, Madam Chair. We did not collect the tax for the environmental lands this year. It's money out of reserves that we put into parks reserves as an equivalent, but it is not LMAC funds nor LMAC-driven funds. Okay. Then I have a question on that. Uh, not that it changes the way I'm going to vote on it, but two things. Number one, it was my understanding that we took money out of our reserves to go ahead and put in for the first year of uh, the conservation money. Instead of charging our citizens for it, it was coming out of our own. We were putting it aside. So I just assumed that it was put into that account. No, we did not put it in that account. That account would be a restricted account. And those funds could only be used for lands that we were acquiring ourselves or for mitigation, et cetera. So it was put into parks and environmental lands reserves as general revenue, uh, which is unrestricted and can be used for this purpose. Okay, so is this going to be part of the $50 million that uh, we're going to bond for the citizens? No, ma'am. What they voted on? No, ma'am. So this is just 
three million that we're, but you know, Commissioner Whitmore, you made such a fuss the other day on our reserves. I don't understand. Uh, but anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, I, I guess it doesn't matter. I just, uh, this whole thing has been handled by the county totally inappropriately. Um, and like I said, I'm going to vote for it simply because of our state senator and our state representative because they've been great partners and they will, I know, continue to do so. So I'm the last one on the board. So we have a motion on the floor by Commissioner Servia, second by Commissioner Van Austin Bridge, but I have to open to public comment. Is there anyone that would like to come forward on this topic? I think, no, nope. I do not have any cards for anyone on this topic. So are there any phone calls? Caller 408, please state your name for the record. Yes, Carol Phelps, uh, Mayaka City. Um, I think the big picture is this. If we look at Rattlesnake Key, I don't see how anybody could be against doing something to preserve the area. Um, just as is, whether you could get there or not, like I said, you watch the tides, you know, but we're, we're making, we need to move along here. Look at the good. Yes, could things have hit and handled better? Always, always. Um, I find it interesting that Mr. Satcher brings up uh, basically the same issues that I um, addressed in my public comment for future agenda items in terms of communication, uh, following proper procedure, timeliness of the information, so that we could react appropriately. Um, you know, kind of like when we have a census every 10 years, which we know is going to generate a redistricting thing and we don't address it at the last minute because we don't have the official figures. These things happen. But overall, I think the best thing for everyone to do is take a look at Rattlesnake Key and, and why we should preserve something like that and focus on the good that we can do with this, regardless how it goes about. For my money, I'd much rather have it spent on something like that uh, than, it, than, let's say, a dog park, pickleboard court, or a soccer field. <laughs> so I think it's a good move. Yeah, you heard me. I did. And um, I think we need to keep it positive, OK? Any other phone calls? Okay, I'm going to close public comment. Uh, all in favor of the motion, Chair say aye. On the board. After the board, after the vote. Since when? All in favor of the vote, say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. It's approved unanimously. Commissioner Whitmore, you are first. Yeah, I just uh, don't want it to go for the rest of the day to think uh, that all of us on the board think the staff handled this badly. I want to thank the staff for doing what they had to do in a quick amount of time. And I know Senator Boyd is listening. I want to thank him for bringing this to our attention and us getting it done. I never met with Senator Boyd about this. I never heard about this except at the dais and when it came before us today. Well, this morning I looked at it. That's it. Thank you. Commissioner Servia. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. I agree with those comments. I want to thank the staff very much for their hard work. Thank you to Senator Boyd. Um, I think that there are some commissioners who don't understand how the process works, and maybe we can help them understand it better in the future, but the well, staff did an outstanding job. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Dr. Helps. Yeah, Madam Chair, I just wanted to uh, clarify the record. Uh, CFO has given me the uh, breakdown. Actually, we had earmarked $4 million from general fund reserves and $1 million for park reserves should environmental lands need the money. That money had not been transferred yet. It's awaiting a budget amendment should the need arise. So the, the these funds then would come from the general fund reserves that we had earmarked uh, for environmental lands and, and parks. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Commissioner Van Ostenbridge, you are next. Okay, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I just wanted to say to uh, Commissioner Satcher that uh, I apologize if you felt left out and in the future I'll use uh, Commissioner comments as an opportunity to make sure I, I fill everybody in on anything and everything that has sort of taken place during the week with uh, other elected officials. Thank you Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Satcher. Thank you Madam Chair. No, I don't feel, feel left out at all. We just made a vote. It's an exciting vote and uh, 
and I'm excited for uh, what we have going on forward. Um, you know, some people mentioned congratulating or appreciating staff, and I do think it's worth noting that we had really some uh, some community leaders come and question uh, our dedication, our commitment to carrying out the purpose uh, and the intent of the voters in regards to the environmental lands uh, referendum. And our county administrator and, uh, and each of us as, as commissioners, but we said, no, that's not the point. The point is that we don't need to uh, tax people anymore right now. We have the amount that this tax would, would raise. We have it available, and if a, uh, a difference-making property were to become available or if we were to get cooperation from someone, we will step forward and make the decision. And uh, it seems like that today um, everyone stayed true to that word. And, uh, and so that's exciting. And I just I think that it's worth noting that, you know, we, we take a lot of criticism um, and, and that's, that's part of our job. So I'm not complaining, but I'm just saying that we also should point out that we said if something came available that was worthwhile, we would take it. And, uh, and we just did. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm next on the board. Um, yeah. I really take offense. I've been on this board for nine years. Uh, next to Commissioner Whitmore, I'm, I've been here the longest with her. And I can tell you I know how things work and how things are to be done. And I also know that I never received a briefing on this. Uh, and I never, by the way, I never mentioned staff. So trust me, I wasn't talking about staff. Uh, but at any rate, so I'm just saying, you know, there's a right way and a wrong way, and nothing should come before this board for a vote where the commissioners have not been briefed. How many of you were briefed on this? How many knew about this? Commissioner Van Ostenbridge, I think you did. You said you'd had several conversations. So I knew about it. I was not briefed. Obviously, you knew as well. I only knew because he, well, you told us he so called Senator me. Senator Boyd. Yeah. So. yeah, because he was concerned about it. So I'm just saying, none of us knew. It, it, I want to make it clear. I was on the receiving end of this. I mean, <laughs> all I did was try to respond to what Not what place I, I was being asked to do for the local senator's project, and I don't think this was a secret to anybody because this had been talked about. But just to, this is not driven by me either. I mean, I, I had I had I had to deal with this this morning to kind of clean it up to get it into a posture where I was comfortable. Uh, discussing it this morning, and I, I appreciate the support. Uh, it, when the day is done, if this deal goes through, we will have accomplished for 10 cents on the dollar one of the projects that was marketed when you went out to the voters for the tax. So, but but just hey, look, this wasn't driven by me. I'm just trying to accommodate as many people as I can accommodate and get the job done. Well, my my only concern is when we are asked to spend taxpayer money. We need to know why and how and where, and, and none of us really knew that information. So that's what we need to work on. That would have to be one time I would agree with Carol Feltz, and I never do, hardly ever. Oh, God, but I will on that one. Commissioner Van Ostenbridge. Well, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I would just say it was discussed in a couple of our meetings. It was not an official briefing. Um, I really didn't uh, foresee it to be a controversial issue. Um, I didn't think it was going to require uh, too much debate amongst the board. Uh, and then, of course, the governor's agenda came out on Friday, so our schedule allowed for a Tuesday or a Thursday uh, presentation, and I encouraged a Thursday presentation to give a little more time. Uh, so I, I felt like with uh, this, the way the situation allotted, I thought we did a, a pretty good job, and I just want to thank uh, <laughs> Senator Boyd and Representative Robinson for their hard work on this. Thank you, Madam Chair. Do you have your hand on the button? I couldn't tell. Okay, I guess not. Uh, you know, I love the... We've got a lot of good explanations. Okay, we're going to go ahead and move forward now. We've got that done. Thank you, Mr. Hunsaker. Uh, we'll go ahead to number one now, the L3 partnership slash Gamble Creek Village plan amendment. Ms. Wenzel. I love calling you that, by the way. Thank you. 
Okay, um, item number one, there are two agenda items tied together, so you'll have two motions um, at the end. PA 1803 Ordinance 2117 is the text amendment, and I'll try to briefly read through the title just so that's on the record. It's a text amendment to the future land use element to create a new future land use overlay known as Planned Village PV. Um, with a range of potential uses and implementation process, creating a village master plan and sub-policies for required components of that village master plan, a financial strategy, overall design principles, um, transportation framework, development standards of the village master plan, establishing a new future land use category known as agricultural open space with a range of potential uses, um, an amendment to policy 2.1.2.2 for an exception to urban sprawl for planned village overlay designated property east of the future development boundary line to amend the transportation element to amend policy 5.3.1.4 to eliminate the requirement for retail office residential and mixed use future land use categories to be adjacent to roadways on the functional classification map series. Um, if located within the newly created PV overlay district. PA 1804, Ordinance 2118 is the following map amendment. Um, this is a map amendment to designate specific real property approximately 5,040 acres from ag rural future land use category to the newly created future land use overlay district of PV overlay um, planned village overlay district, along with amending the future land use designation of that 5,040 acres to Res 3, approximately 1,152 acres, PSP 1, approximately 107 acres, ROR, the residential office retail, approximately 88, 88 acres, and MU 1,108 acres. The IL, industrial light future land use category, approximately 212 acres, and the AG OS, um, future land use, newly created future land use category for 2,372 acres. And the property is located at 23551 and 25155 State Road 62 in Parish. Um, so this is the adoption hearing for both the applications. The items were heard um, on September 16, 21. By a vote of six to one, the commission transmitted the applications to the state and the state agencies were for review. So now it's back before you. Um, the state agency's <coughs> comments are in your agenda packet. No objections or substantial comments were provided from those state agencies. So Mr. Barnaby, will, um, representing the property owner, will provide um, an overview of the amendments he, that he has made to the language since the transmittal hearing. So with that, I'll ask Mr. Barnaby to All right, commissioners, this is not a quasi item, it's, uh, so we don't have to worry about any communications. Uh, Mr. Barnaby? Madam Chairman. I know that you asked for extra time, and I, I believe did. it's, what, 20 minutes? Um, is that correct? Yes, we agree that no more than 20 minutes would be fine. Okay. Okay. Uh, I, well, just so the commission knows, I asked for an hour if, <laughs> but only if you all wanted to hear it hear the whole presentation again. I know you've heard it once. I didn't think necessarily that was necessary, but I've got it if you want to hear it. All right, having said that, understanding, uh, I don't see anybody going, yes, I really want to hear it again. Okay. Well, so, well, in all due respect, it was very controversial, so put as much as, to me, put as much as you can into it because it was pretty controversial and just so we can't say, well, we just slid it by or well, whatever. Just please. I, I'll be happy to address any issues you want to get. I, I don't know that I need to go through the whole presentation. Um, I think we, we, we gave, made a very uh, thorough presentation at the, at the first, at the transmittal hearing. Uh, so if, if that's okay, if there's questions once you get, I'll be happy to do that. <coughs> uh, so let me. Mr. Whitmore, are you off the board now? I don't want to take you off. Are you all? Okay. Go ahead, Mr. Barnaby. I'm sorry. That's okay. Thank you. All right. <coughs> um, this is. Uh, real quick, this is for Gamble Creek Village, and this is this is the uh, public hearing uh, for adoption of these uh, conference plan amendments, which would allow Gamble Creek Village to be considered. Uh, with me today uh, are Carol Clark, our planner, Bob Lombardo, our engineer, Alex and I, who was our traffic engineer. I also want to introduce uh, Bob and Ricky Lindsay, um, who are here in the audience, uh, David and Howdy Lindsay, uh, who are also uh, the some of the owners and uh, Ms. Elizabeth Lindsay, 
uh, who is, I think, 97, if I got that right? Yes, okay. Bless her heart. Hey. And uh, <clears throat> Rob Lindsay, who was at the last, at the, at the transmittal hearing, would love to be here, but work got in the way of this uh, coming in here, so he apologizes for not being here. All right. Uh, this is the first step in a multi-step process. Once again, our request is for you to adopt uh, ordinances 21-17 and 21-18 for text and map amendments to allow the possible development of a rural village with nearly 50% of the area being preserved as either agricultural or open space uses. Oops. Uh, real quickly, uh, the project specifics uh, with, this pro with this particular property and with any other ones that might come forward in order to qualify to, uh, for um, village designation, uh, you would have to have 5,000 acres or more. Um, that's approximately three miles wide by three miles long in this particular case. Um, and it is by far the largest undeveloped tract remaining in Manatee County. Uh, our property is lo uh, located south on uh, State Road 62, south of the FPNL plant. Uh, and the Lindsays have owned this property for 35 years. So they, it's not like they bought it to develop it right away. They've been farming it for a long time. This is the location map, and you will see State Road 62 running to the north. That little um, road up in the upper uh, right-hand corner is Saffold Road, uh, and the F Pinnell plant is, again, right to the north. And you can see uh, just to the uh, west of this, this uh, line is the uh, future development boundary. Uh, this is one of, this is, again, a rare opportunity for Manatee County. Uh, we are planning on doing a, a uh, significant agri-hood in this area. Um, it is unique to Florida, and I think it will be a, uh, a great project for this, for this area and uh, one you have not seen before. Uh, this uh, Gamble Creek Village is innovative, visionary, uh, planned community for future versus unplanned piecemeal development, which I think is very important for the commission to remember. Uh, it is unique for this county, uh, once in a generation opportunity, and is the antidote to urban sprawl. Uh, this project will, like I, as I said before, is over 5,000 acres. It will be a master plan community. We are uh, designating over 3.7 miles as agricultural open space, which is a new category, at 1 to 80 units per acre. Uh, that does not, that 3.7 miles, square miles, by the way, does not include any trails or parks that will be located in the other areas of the uh, uh, Gamble Creek Village. Uh, we will have a neo-traditional urban core, which we've set out a fair amount of detail in the comprehensive plan for that, which will have housing, shops, res restaurants, and offices. Uh, the reserved area, um, we have reserved area for schools and a community park in the center of the uh, facility, um, and that's our plan as we move forward. And then uh, infrastructure needs, which I know the commission has talked about and we've talked about in some detail, um, <clears throat> will be addressed in much more detail in our village master plan, um, and part of that also talks about financing of those improvements both on and off site, and that is something we'll have to come back to the county commission. Since the transmittal hearing, this is the new part, uh, we have made revisions to the proposed text amendments and what we did in that regard. Um, there were several items raised by the county attorney's office, which we had said we were going to make at the last hearing, uh, and we did. Um, I'm going to go through those really quickly. I'm not going to reference the policy number, but uh, we clarified the possibility of uh, independent impact fee study and uh, in independent impact fee numbers for this project, uh, requiring local development agreement to implement our financial strategy regarding infrastructure. Um, <clears throat> we picked up on Commissioner Van Ostenbridge's idea about horse trails. We thought that was a good idea, so we incorporated it in two policies here. Uh, we made it clear that septic tanks would be prohibited by the developer, and we, uh, uh, we uh, indicated and put in something that uh, Sarah wanted us to put in that said uh, that if we reserve acreage for uh, uses that we'll look at the dual rational nexus analysis as part of that, um, that, uh, that uh, process. Um, <clears throat> And as I noted, we added policies to promote horse trails, which we thought was a great idea. Uh, we met with the Florida Department of Economic Opportunity in Tallahassee, uh, and there were no concerns raised by staff in that meeting. It was a lovely trip. Uh, we, res we received comments of no objection from all of our responding state agencies, as Lisa pointed out, Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission, South 
West Florida Water Management District, the Florida Department of Environmental Protection, the Florida Department of Transportation, and the Florida Department of Economic Opportunity. Now, we also, uh, Alex and I, had a meeting with uh, FDOP um, staff. Uh, should this get moved forward, we, are, we, we have an idea of how we're going to move forward with FDOT uh, should this be approved. Uh, we also received the endorsement of power. Uh, and I should note, we met with a number of people that we had uh, uh, that had interest in it. If, they, if anybody wanted to meet with us, we met with them during this, this period, uh, and that included a number of people. Uh, we did receive the endorsement of power uh, that East, the East County organization, uh, primarily located in Mayaca City. Uh, and uh, I'm not going to read it all, but basically the key to it was uh, Gamble Creek Village is a new approach. It touts not just development, but smart development. Uh, development that considers and plans for green spaces, conservation areas, and a well-thought-out plan for future generations. Uh, we concur with that, and we appreciate those comments. With that, oh. it's the holiday it. season. I will uh, <coughs> conclude with that. If, unless there are any questions, we request approval of Manatee County Ordinances 21-17 and 21-18. I have be happy to answer any questions. I have a couple of commissioners on the board. Commissioner Whitmore. Just a few. First of all, I don't know about any best, but I got holy heck from the Parish Civic Association on the last meeting because they said that they had passed along that they had voted not to support this. Um, I know there are some on the board that did support it, but I guess the majority didn't. So that when we were asking about this at the last meeting, everybody's going, oh, they're not. I asked, well, they're not here. And they go, everything seems to be OK. So. Then I know there was a lot of consternation. So then I called Mr. Alan Jones, and I found out that the there, the issue was, and I and I actually spoke to y'all because I was allowed to. It was the water treatment plant, and this project here would more or less force everybody else to do something like that. And Mr. Jones had an idea. I passed it on to Mrs. Lindsay and Mark, uh, and said, "Could you please talk to him? I don't know if you did, but." if it could be designed, and this may not even happen. I mean, what we're doing is gonna cost a lot of money to do this treatment plant, but, and if we do approve something like this, but the idea was to allow other landowners, because it would be cost prohibitive for others, to be able to do this in the future, and design it with financial input from others that they could tap in if they decided to in the future. Our whole problem was it would have been leapfrogging. And that's what I heard, I think, that Parrish had said. Also, uh, I asked to have a briefing on this yesterday because I was reading something. So some things had changed, and you know the professionals are professionals, and you know I was trying to catch it, but there is something um, about the, uh, the the county utilities and you in the future, and I'd like to know a little bit about that, and also the second means of access in the future. You had mm -hmm. mentioned that there would be a commitment later. Now we're just sending. What are we doing with this today? Just uh, we're we're passing the ordinance for the text amendment, but something becomes before us. It will be in more detail. Where, if you know right now that we're requiring something or that some of us really want this to happen before it goes any further, that will happen at another stage. Correct. Correct. Okay, but can you answer my questions about parish civic associations concerns? Had anybody been able to talk to any of the landowners in the surrounding area? Mainly, um, you know, Mr. Jones or all those whose idea was maybe if we could just tap into it, maybe we could buy into it a little bit better. Let, let me. I know there's a bunch. <laughs> That's a bunch. Let me talk about this real quick. Um, uh, I heard conflicting information on the Parish Civic Association, frankly, and never got a letter from from them. We got uh, one in last August, but that's the only one, okay. correct? Yes. Well, I'm not sure. They sent it to me, but oh. that's okay. Um, the, uh, um, but that's fine. Mm -hmm. you know, that's, you know, and I think there are people on both sides with that organization, exactly. and that's not that doesn't totally surprise me. The, uh, in regard to the utilities, uh, we have. Uh, I, th I think it will be. It, there's. Let me put it this way. As we're moving forward, if there are other people that want to join in, we will look at that in, in moving forward. I, th uh, I think I told you this. We would, we would. Uh, there's nothing that would prohibit us from having them tie into that plan. 
Um, there's, um, and I know the county doesn't want that plant right now, and I, that's fine. Uh, that's up to you all. Um, but yes, they would have the opportunity to tie in with a, with a financial commitment um, for what, what their needs would be, yes. That would not be, that we would not object to that at all. And it's possible <clears throat> that other properties could be, uh, that are around us at least, could be tied into this project as well. At some point, we'd have to come back to you, obviously, uh, with that. If they, if, but they'd have to meet the same criteria that are, that are in, this, in, the, uh, in the overlay district requirements, which are pretty stringent, as, as we talked about at the last meeting. Second, me uh, second means of access. Oh, second means of access, thank you. Uh, right now, we, are, are, we have access from State Road 62 and Saffold Road. I think for a actually a fair amount of time, that is all we're going to need. But at some point, we're going to have to do that. Our financial plan is going to have to address that as we move forward. That's one of the things we specifically put in the financial plan, and that will come back to you. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Satcher. <coughs> thank you, Madam Chair. It's good to see you, um, Mr. Barnaby. Um, I heard about the horse trails, but so those policies you think will really encourage or come close to requiring? Where where are we at on that? We put it in as an option, uh, as, as something to do. I think it's a, a great idea, and, a, and uh, it is something we specifically have to look at. Okay, so I'm glad uh, Commissioner Van Ostenbridge brought that up for that to be adopted um, into the plan here, and uh, glad that you heard him out on that. Um, I wanted to remind me, or if you don't mind, remind me where we're at on um, future roads that might need to transverse this. Are we, are we putting aside any right of way for future county roads oh, yeah. that would connect? Uh, right at the moment, certainly uh, the collector roads, you already have, um, I think, two collector roads that run through this project at, at certain points. Uh, we obviously will be putting aside right away for that. Almost 10, uh, and on top of that, we're proposing two north-south uh, collector roads, which are not on your maps right now, and we will obviously be putting right aside right away for that. Uh, that's, I know it's over 10 miles of right away uh, that will, be, uh, will obviously have to be reserved for, for future roadways, and this, for the benefit, of the, frankly, for the benefit of the county, it's much easier to get it through, through a project development as opposed to uh, condemnation. Yeah. Because I know, um, you know, one uh, source of consternation for, you know, people in East County and uh, the parish area especially is roads that where you're almost where you need to go, but instead you have to drive another, you know, 10 miles. Or maybe that's a little bit of an exaggeration, but, you know, Victory Road, uh, you are almost to 69th and Buffalo Creek Park, but instead you have to go down, around, over to Erie. Etc. And so, um, anything we can do policy-wise moving forward uh, to where, as and I'm sure when they were when that was approved, I'm sure no one could imagine that situation. That many people living out that far, um, but here we are, and those uh, small roads are uh, now full. And um, and so, anything we can do policy-wise moving forward to keep that front and center, I appreciate. And I'm speaking to staff as much as to you, um, and developers as much as to you. Um, in the future, and um, I think that, and then you mentioned the water treatment. Um, that is one of the things that, you know, after we had this vote, I went home and I was just like, ugh, you know. But I do want to emphasize, because I do remember some public comments after this, I just want to be clear to the public, um, this proposal does not put a single septic tank uh, in this development, correct? That's correct. In fact, it'll prevent septic tanks from being developed in the site. So, so I just want to uh, communicate that to everyone that with 5,000 acres uh, by right, if they keep everything as an ag designation, um, they can put a thousand right out of thousand homes, and each of those on five acres, and each of those has a right to put in a septic tank. And uh, but with this proposal, uh, there is higher density but there's also a lot more environmental land set aside, uh, significantly more, and then there's also uh, zero septic tanks because you're making a uh, water treatment uh, facility. Uh, so am I correct on those? You are absolutely payments? correct. 
Okay, so I just wanted to communicate that uh, to everyone at home, and this is uh, with a lot of the things out east. Um, it's, a, it's never a fun decision for me because there's uh, growth and you like things. I like driving and seeing farmland, uh, but it is, there's a lot of pressure. People want to move here, people want to build, they want to live here, and a lot of the landowners are ready to sell for whatever reason. And uh, so then, to me, the next decision is, well, how can we as a county best navigate uh, that process, allow the free market to work, but also, um, you know, not, pres uh, not end up with a free-for-all uh, where we don't, you know, where we have roads that go nowhere and, um, and uh, sewer that we don't need added to our environment. So, um, and because of that, I try to always encourage you know, smart growth is what I, what I consider it, call it. Uh, this is a one-off um, type of development in my mind for me. Um, I'll be interested to see how uh, this comes about, how long it takes, um, and, uh, you know, what we end up with it. I am very hopeful for a great community there that has a, a special, uh, you know, a niche of its own and that people can enjoy. And... Um, and so, but just if there were to be anyone else with, uh, you know, 5,000 acre parcels east of, uh, you know, things that we have agreed upon being uh, developed here at the commission, I don't know that I, it would take a lot for me to support another one because this seems unique and, uh, but I do want to see how it plays out at least, uh, you know, as we go forward, moving forward. So with that, thank you. Commissioner Servia. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, Mr. Barnaby and Carol Clark and Bob Lombardo and the whole fantastic team, uh, three of the best, <coughs> my friends, uh, and the Lindsays. You know, I, I really like you guys. I like what you're doing, but here, here are my concerns, and, and I've talked to you about it before. Um, so I can't, I think this concept is so cool. I, I love this concept. My problem is the location of it and the timing of it. Because everything between the FDAB and this property is going to change once this is approved. Um, you know, some of the, the best communities and the most efficiently developed communities are those that have clear boundaries between, between rural and urban uses. And when you start uh, making that a gray area, it's like uh, releasing the pressure valve. You know, uh, you're going to see growth happen much faster than it ever would before between the FDAB and this land. Um, and, and that does concern me. Um, leapfrogging development, you know, as a planner uh, for more than 30 years, um, that's one of the fundamentals. You, you don't leapfrog out to start developing and then develop back in. It's just not it's not an efficient way to develop property. Um, infrastructure is going to drive the future growth. So this team is willing to put in some pretty advanced infrastructure. They're talking about roadways, rights of way, advanced water treatment, sewer facility. All of that is really great. Again, I ask you to think about what happens between the FDAB line and, and this property line uh, once you start doing that. Um, you know, I don't like the longer automobile trips. I think we should be uh, stressing to shorten them. We need more affordable housing. This type of development, unfortunately, um, hinders affordable housing rather than supports it. Um, so that's where I am. I love this concept, love the team, wish I could find a way to get fully behind it but I worry about the rest of the land. I don't think you can look at it in a vacuum. Thank you. <coughs> All right, I don't have any other commissioners on the board. Commissioners, any other comments before we move on? All right, not seeing any. Thank you, Mr. Barnaby. Um, staff, if you have a presentation for us. Um, no, ma'am, I do not have a presentation. We do have staff from um, Public Works and Utilities as well, if you have any questions for us. Okay. Then I'm going to go ahead and open this to public comment. I have several cards. First one is Elizabeth Arnold, and after her is Mark Vandery.
I, I'm Elizabeth Arnold, and I brought a video for you all today. Yeah. I got a feeling that people are going to be hungry. The food supply in the United States is going to really hurt. It's imperative to our national security. Hungry people aren't strong people. It doesn't make for a very safe place to live when people start fighting over food. Some folks can see the fact that we've lost 31 million acres of farmland in 20 years and say, that's not a big deal. Rivers of cars and trucks compressed between houses stacked like cordwood, between parking lots and mini malls ready to serve anonymous strangers. Urban sprawl is when development begins to encroach on areas that had been rural. Usurp more earth, sterilize and seal it from the sun and rain. We knew we were losing farmland, but we're actually losing farmland almost twice as fast as we thought before. 1.5 million acres a year. When I came back, everything was gone. 175 acres every hour. I don't think it matters what we name these streets. We're still on somebody's pasture. That will never be a pasture again three acres a minute. This will probably be the last time the barn needs to be painted anyway because 10 years from now it will be down. It is alarming, it should be alarming. That is a irreplaceable resource. The relentless waves of wealth and debt that may go hungry with no landscapes left to feed their souls or flesh. That's the mindset we need to turn around. It is a big deal. So I would just simply like to say that I pretty much agree with what um, Misty Serbia said. I think that leapfrogging is a really bad plan. And I really think that if you do this, you've just obliterated the FDAB, and you really won't have much rural left. There won't be any. Welcome so to the Angus Report. That, I'm your host, I know it Clint sounds Nefford. cool to have and an We're bringing you the latest cattle news and education. It's, it's, it sounds cool, and maybe another time it might be, but now's not the time. Thank you. Mark Vandery and then Pamela Gespert. Good afternoon again, Mark Vandery, um, and thanks again for listening to me. I live out in East County, and I think I can explain some of the issues among the East County folks where some community organizations that are uh, pro-preservation seem to be for, some seem to be against the L3. Uh, I know my neighbors are um, divided as well. Uh, the, the issue is that they're looking at it as the lesser of two evils. That's a hard thing to swallow sometimes, but I, I have to say that um, you know there, what Commissioner Servia is saying about the risks involved with this are real. Uh, you are leapfrogging. There is risk with uh, the infrastructure collapsing under a private entity. Uh, there, there's questions about the the bonding issues, insurance going forward. Um, you know, there's issues about how, how does it parallel with the Babcock Ranch preservation down in, in uh, organization down in Charlotte County, and what have they done down there to mitigate some of these risks that Commissioner Survey has brought up? You know, that's worth looking into. But among my neighbors, the discussion is that they have lost faith in the BOCC's ability to control the overdevelopment in our county and to preserve the natural beauty of East County. They've lost your faith in your ability to do that. Today, Rattlesnake Key, that was great. That's the first time in a long time everybody seemed to have stepped up and done something positive in regards to preservation. Now, the L3 is a great concept. Um, I, I like the idea, like Commissioner Servia. I think it's a great idea in theory. In practice, how do we keep it from being a bait and switch? How do we keep the how do we keep the land barons from coming in here and messing it all up? I mean, we don't want it to become a 
a Disney version petting zoo glorified agricultural neighborhood. That's not what the intent would be here. Um, when you talk about the FDAB, yeah, you've got like two miles between the present FDAB and where this location is for the L3. My neighbors, as far as they're concerned, you all have already obliterated the FDAB. And you're, you're giving mixed me uh, messages, uh, mixed signals. Back in April on the uh, Lakewood Ranch Northeast development, Everybody up there, a lot of you all said, hey, this is essentially moving the FDAB line. And then everybody voted unanimously to go ahead and develop east of the FDAB. So Thank you, sir. Thank you. Pam Gisbert, and then Glenn Jubilina, and you will have 10 minutes, sir. Hello, my name is Pam Gisbert, and I don't believe that this development should be pushed forward with the FDAB in place. This is two miles east of the line, and like Commissioner Serbia stated clearly, that those two miles are going to be filled with development in just a matter of time. And the FDAB definition states that the line is intended to be preserved primarily for agricultural uses and to contain urban sprawl. Um, of the many staff responses, the one staff response on page 53 concerns concerning that there are no details that have been provided regarding centralized water and sewer systems, being this 5,000-acre village is two miles east of the FDAB. There's no public utilities in the area, and the applicant proposes a private utility service. A concern is stated by the staff with private utility is how such utility systems will be reviewed, approved, operated, maintained, such that there will be no effect on the county's water system. Also stated in the staff response, is that experience has shown that when issues arise with private utility systems, the residents look to the county for solutions and expect the county to resolve any issues. Water affects us all. As we all know from our own experience, that when there is a problem with our water in a county, it affects the whole county. And in a worst case scenario, the whole state. Um, Elizabeth Arnold's letter was wonderful um, because it's shocking to hear that 175 acres an hour of farmland are being destroyed or built upon because um, we all need water and we all need food. Um, I would like for you to vote no to the PA 18 03 ordinance and vote no to the PA 1804 ordinance. And as Commissioner Satcher mentioned earlier, that the small roads are now full and coming from Pinellas County, it's gonna, it's coming your way. And they're not gonna be full anymore, they're gonna be clogged. When the houses are built, and they're full of people and cars. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Glenn Jubilina, and as I stated, you will have 10 minutes. Nice job again. Thank you. Thank you. For the record, Glenn Jubilina, I don't think I'll need 10 minutes. So I was going over some of this stuff on the proposal. So. I think it's before it's time, so I'm kind of what if guy. So, what if you approve it? There are certain assurances I would like to be seen in here. So, it says 10% of the housing. Really don't know where that is yet. Um, I do like the idea of uh, their own wastewater, gray water system. That saves a ton of money of lift stations, 
and pipeline that puts the service, service debt on the taxpayers for the next 50 years. So hats off on the centralized system. I think that's a home run. I think perhaps they could take it a step further with recycling and even their trash. I mean, I just don't see recycling trucks going out there for picking up these blue things. So I'm not, I'm not sure about that. So the other one is the workforce housing. We, we don't know where it is. You know, there, there's, there's too many what ifs in there. We're gonna do it, but we don't know where we're gonna put it. So they had mentioned, okay, 10%. Well, here's the deal breaker. It doesn't include the first 1,000 houses. Who do you think is going to build them? Right? They want all this cash flow for the first 1,000 houses, and then we'll put in 10%. If anything, I would think you'd want your workforce out there, boots on the ground, within the community, and bump that up to 25%. So they take the first year out. So they come across, oh, we're gonna do 7,200, 10%, 720. Those are not real numbers. They're eliminating the first 1,000. So really, they're only coming up with 620 affordable housing. And, and I haven't heard anything on the, on the affordable housing. Are you going by HUD standards? 220,000, as it should be? Those are government regulations. You know, when you build a half million dollar house, affordable may be 100,000 less. So again, there's too many what ifs in this. I, I, don't, I don't get it, so that's a concern. But the first 1,000 houses that are being waived for affordable is nuts. That's, that's a bad business plan. That's bad for the workers that gotta go out there to build those houses, drive in, drive out, drive in, at least if you had, you know, uh, a hundred houses there with uh, you know electricians and plumbers and everyone else that you need to build these houses, it'd be a lot easier. So that's a deal breaker. If they can't adjust that number, I'm not for it. I'm not for it whatsoever. Um, the 80 acres. So let's assume that they're going to have migrants there, right? So why can't they do the migrant farming, right? right on the 80 acres. Why can't the farmer live there and, and, and put in whatever workforce housing he needs to work that farm? I, I don't get it. So an RADU is gonna be allowed on, on the 80 acres? Nobody told me that. Didn't hear anything about that. Um, now according to this, you wanna stick them out in Mayaka. I mean, are they not good enough to live within the community? I don't know. And then again, uh, a numbers guy, I don't hear anything. You know, how many um, dwelling units uh, are gonna be bumped up to six? I don't hear any numbers in that direction. So if you're gonna get the increased density, and they say they're gonna do it, but they haven't given me any facts. So if the plan goes through, those questions need to be answered. And then we're, gonna, then we're gonna talk about the schools. And here's, here's my biggest concern, is that we build schools out there. Oh, we need, we got 72 houses, we need a middle school, maybe a high school, right? The last developers have never put in affordable housing for the, for the janitors or the school teachers or the entry level work uh, sheriffs or fire department, zero. They haven't built a square foot in 20, 30 years that I know of. So, so the school district, so the, if the ask come from the school district and says, look, we're gonna need five acres for this middle school, we want 10, and we're gonna take the five acres, and we're gonna build our own workforce housing for school district employees. Is that gonna be a zoning problem? Is there gonna be pushback from the community? Is there gonna be pushback from the board? Is it gonna be pushback from zoning? That's another deal breaker. If the school system can't come in here and say, look, we've got nowhere with the previous developers in, in, in building workforce housing for our janitors and teachers, we're gonna take that task on ourselves, 
or we're going to partner up with a moral compass developer that is going to do the workforce housing on school property. Are we going to get any pushback from the board, zoning, or the community? That's a major, major concern. And then on the, the uh, they should, you know, you should have one big Laura for this. Okay, here you go. And then again, where are you going to put the workforce housing? It's going to look great. As far as I'm concerned, you should never know if your neighbor's working as a cashier at Publix or he's a, or he's a, a doctor at Manatee Memorial. Those people all should interact. And when you don't have that component, uh, you, you alienate the rest of the community. It's got to be integrated all the way down from the cashier to the CEO, executive CEO. Um, and then, I, you know, they're so sustainable. I don't, I don't hear anything about a solar farm. I didn't hear any options on the residentials for installing solar. So, um, yeah, FP&L may have the battery pack across the street. But that's, that's not a, that, look at Babcock. They have their own solar farm. I think that should be incorporated in there as well. So again, workforce housing for the fire, EMS, sheriff, veterans, cashiers, should be a pr priority within that community. Nobody, especially on the lower end of the minimum wage, should have to drive 20, 30 miles at four bucks a gallon to get to work and back. So I think they can do a better job. A lot of what ifs. Um, and then one of the questions is the farmland they have taken away. Great movie, by the way. Outstanding. Has anybody reached out to the, to the folks they were selling their product to and say, what are you going to do? You know, you've got 3,500 less, less product coming. Are you going to increase prices in the area? Are you going to look for different farmers? So somebody's getting squeezed out of that land. We're probably going to see it as an increase at the store, quite frankly, if there's less farming. Higher demand, higher prices. It's simple. So um, those are my concerns. And you know, if they want to take it to the next level, solar farm, allow a tiny house community, you know, give them 10 acres somewhere and let them do their little tiny houses. Uh, ADU should be, should be part of the, the model when they sell a house. Should be automatic. Um, residential solar. So anyways, um, I think it's before it's time. But you've heard my concerns, the school district, affordable housing. The devil is in the details. And there's way too many details left out here for this taxpayer and citizen. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to come forward on this issue for public comment? Any phone calls, ma'am? Madam Chair, we have one caller. All right. Caller 408, please press star six to unmute and state your name for the record. Yes, Carol Fouts, um, lots to say, so I'll go quick. Um, as those of you who know me and have engaged with me and discussed on the project, I've been very reticent to express my personal opinions. Uh, Carol, you need to be closer to the telephone. We're having trouble hearing you. All right, we well, got it. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, thank you. All righty. Um, one of the reasons for my reluctance to weigh in on this issue is due to the recent dichotomy between what the citizens say they want and don't want, the commission providing these scant three minutes to express that, and then doing the complete opposite of what they heard the citizens say and is on public record. So I am unsure if the number of people speaking either for or against this project are truly expressing their true opinions or perhaps are mastering some of the same Machiavellian techniques utilized in the past by others to say one thing but mean or do the exact opposite, as we know the outcome will probably be whatever is the opposite of public input and opinion. One of the things that I think has become obvious with um, uh, our concerns about the FDAB is that the FDAB move is going to be approved and essentially already has been, just in a sleight of hand way. We just witnessed that in the redistricting effort, which excluded a massive amount of agricultural land from that supposed rural district. We tried to say no, we were not heard, and the BOCC did the opposite of what we asked. So for every action, there is an opposite and equal reaction. If a facet of this project is opposed, it's the responsibility of those opposed to define the problem and suggest an appropriate solution and be given the opportunity to do so. Anything else is just whining. You've heard concerns 
uh, regarding the agricultural aspects. You've heard concerns regarding the traffic. Uh, Glenn has brought up some magnificent points that I think that are quite valid and should be discussed. And I am pretty certain that if we do this the right way and we value that input, um, that we make, I like everyone saying it's not, the, it's not the time. Well, maybe it's ahead of its time, but it's only going to be ahead of its time if we work together and communicate to a common goal. And we do not allow politics or parties or preferences to eliminate our ability to come up with a valid compromise to reach a, a, an adequate goal. Um, I had brought to the public's attention that this land was in consideration for Mr. Hunsicker's use of his environmental land sales tax dollars back in 2018 when he was advocating that measure. So it's obvious this land represents an environmental benefit that the Lindsay should be given a financial incentive and compensation to preserve in some manner. And I believe there are parts of this that that's what we're trying to do. I find it interesting that... Um, uh, Commissioner Van Ostenbridge advocated for horse trails on this property because uh, 20 years ago we were told that there were Thank you, horse Phelps. trail down Lakewood Ranch Boulevard. Three minutes are yeah. up. Do we have another I caller? Like okay, thank you. It's going to be a debate. <laughs> um, all right, now's the time for uh, BCC questions to the applicant staff or citizens. I seem to be the only one on the board. I just wanted to, to make a couple of comments on some things that I heard. Um, about two weeks ago, I was invited to lunch with some of the members of the Farm Bureau. Mm. And the problem is, is that a lot of your farmers are now wanting to sell their property. Mm -hmm. And they have every right to do that. Because they're getting up older, they need to retire, and their children don't want to be farmers. They have a right to sell their property. Now, I realize that a lot of, maybe some people wouldn't care about that, but as commissioners, we represent all the citizens in Manatee County, not just a few that come in here. And so it, it's a hard thing to try and balance because they have that right uh, to sell their property. So it, it's a little bit difficult, but I just wanted to mention that because I don't know if a lot of people really realize that a lot of the farmers right now have their property up for sale, and it's very sad to me, um, but it's true. Uh, the other thing is is that, uh, you know, I, I heard um, Ms. Feltz talking about how, you know, p public comment, people come in here and they s tell us all this stuff, and, and yes, and, and we listen, and, and you, I, I want you to come in here and give us your thoughts. But at the same time, please don't misunderstand. We have right at 400,000 people in this county. So we have a responsibility to all citizens. Um, so it's, again, it's not as cut and dry as we had a few people come in here and so therefore we need to do this and we're not listening you know, to you if we don't do what you say. It, it, we can't look at it that way. So I just, I know sometimes that's, not what you want to hear, but, you know, in, in trying to be realistic, I mean, that's the truth. Mm -hmm. um, Elizabeth Arnold, man, I, I get it. I know where you're coming from. I really do. But, you know, you need to be talking to the farmers mm -hmm. that are listing their property, their farmland for sale. Because that has to happen before it even comes to us. So it, it's, it's a bigger issue than just this BOCC. It's a much broader issue that needs to be looked at. So I'm not sure what the answer is, but I just wanted to mention those things. Uh, and, and I will tell you that the Farm Bureau, it was some great conversation um, that was had uh, recent, you know, recently on that. And we've had some farmers come in where they've sold their land. And we have other farmers that have come in that are looking to develop their land. Uh, so it's a very tough situation. Commissioner Whitmore. Uh, Mark, I just have a couple questions, right? This is the time I can ask, Madam Chair? Right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Mark, I just have a couple questions. First of all, what, with the amount of thousands of acres you have, how many septic tanks would go on that property? 
Uh, we could we could put uh, well we can develop right now up to a little over a thousand units on that site so that'd be a thousand septic tanks. So you'd have a thousand septic tanks. A little over tank. that, but potentially. Approximately, okay. In the and and some of the stuff that Glenn and everybody's talking about that's at right, unfortunately right now that's not at this point of the plan right. um, because we haven't seen anything that's going to be coming before us yet and you know what our concerns are. Is there going to be reclaimed water if you're having your own water treatment plant? Uh, we're going to have to do something with that water. Yes, I, right, was, I was going to I would, say. I would expect that to yeah, happen. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's great fertilizer, I hear. So. Correct. Okay. So why would power, and I just have a question, why would power, and you may not know, but why would power support your project two miles from any infrastructure and then against Taylor Morrison that was 20 feet from infrastructure? I'm going to answer no? that as Best I can. I don't know for sure. I think you, I think you all got a copy of their. In fact, I'm sure you all got a copy of their, their, uh, their email. I, I think it's because of the design that will, first of all, have a large buffer of ag open space areas with very very low densities. I mean, in all that area put together, the most number of units you can put on there is about 30. So, the not only do you have that, and by the way, like from State Road 62, the nearest. You know, <coughs> Once you get to the, the, the Res 3, that's almost a half mile before you, can, before you, you get there. So there's, you can have a big buffer along State Road 62, for example. Um, I think it would also protects uh, real agricultural use. And when I say that, it's, look, I know people love one unit to five acres, but one unit to five acres, you can't do much farming on that. Mm -mm. I mean, you might have a horse, maybe. You're not going to put like a, you know, you're not going to have a like a farm of, a big farm with uh, with corn or something like that. So, this provides a continuous strip of of a significant strip of agricultural uh, land that we're preserving uh, that will either be land, uh, ag land or it will be open space, one or the other. Okay, and I don't think too long ago we just approved a very large farmer that. Uh, was the grower of Lay's potato chips? Yeah, I was thinking about, I almost said that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Well, I didn't say the name, but oh. okay. But but that is what we're seeing from what Commissioner Baugh just said, and I've heard from many farmers that their kids are moving away. They do not want to have anything to do with farming. <laughs> Unfortunately, I noticed when Tommy O'Brien, which he did, um, he doesn't have his farm anymore. He started going to hydroponics because of all the severe weather and not being able to have crops, so he started doing his strawberry farming and experimenting and then doing a lot in hydroponics because of other issues. I totally get it. I understand. I'm, you know, till I d vote, I haven't made up my mind yet, but till I vote is when I'm going to make up my mind because there's positives and there's negatives, but, and, and right now, I can't, I mean, I can see the positives, but I can't, s when it comes to another stage is when I can say, forget it, it's, it's not going to work. If, it come, if we approve this now, we still haven't seen what you're going to bring to us. But you do know that I am very, very interested. And I know Mr. Jones, who I um, have told everybody publicly, is very interested that whatever you do, that those two miles of neighboring properties are able to hook in if they so choose and they pay. But that means Mr. Lombardo and everybody else are going to have to figure out how to design something like that to hook up to. So. I do want to bring that to attention. I agree, um, um, Misty, I agree with your comments also. It, this is something that, and I keep thinking of Lakewood Ranch when it was a dirt road when I lived here. And yes, they were a little bit closer to the infrastructure, but everybody wasn't happy from what Pat Glass had told me. So again, I'll vote whenever, but uh, I just want to have some of my concerns that you know that if this passes, I'm still going to bring up the concerns of some of the citizens in that area that have major issues still if, if I can if I can comment on that real quickly yes. um, you know some of the comments you heard today and, and I'm not sure I'm in rebuttal or not but some of the comments you heard today I you know look this is the first step in the process this is a comp plan level. we put a lot of we put a lot of detail in here probably more than any in fact I'm sure more than any other comp plan uh, revision you've seen in part to try, try to address a lot of the concerns that were raised but it also applies, you know, you know, we're, we're going to have to 
get on the ground, see what's going on, and that's what the village plan is for. And we specifically put that in there so it would come back to you so that you can look at this. We know there's a lot more detail that has to come, and I think that's fair. Um, and, I, and we're going to provide that to you. Just This is just the first step in that process. And it, you, you can't get to that step without knowing that you want to approve it with this step. Thank you. Commissioner Servia. Yes, Madam Chairman, I just wanted to um, add a little bit more information to the comments I heard from you, and that is that, yes, everyone has a right to sell their property. Everyone has a right to sell their property. We have a responsibility to execute the comprehensive plan and to make sure that land is developed in the way that this board sets policy. So I just wanted to say that. Just because you're a farmer and you want to sell land because your family doesn't want to farm anymore, that's separate and apart from how we manage property in the county. Thanks. Uh, Commissioner Satcher. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just wanted to say one more time for everyone uh, watching at home to be very clear, this vote, um, assuming that this plan comes to fruition, which some plans that are this grand don't, uh, but if this were, vote were to pass, um, this doesn't put a single septic tank on this property. So we mentioned earlier a thousand septic tanks. That's as it stands now by right on five acre parcels of agriculture development. Nobody could do anything about that. With this vote, it actually completely prevents that. There'd be zero um, uh, of those on the property. So I just wanted to say that just for anybody watching at home. All right, I don't have any other commissioners on the board. Uh, Mr. Barnaby, did you want to respond back to what Mr. Uh, Satcher or Commissioner Satcher said? Well, do you want, I, I can do that as I'm part of my rebuttal? I'm going to come back to you in a minute okay. if you want. Uh, no, I, I agree with what he just said. I, <laughs> let's put it that way. I know. Yes, yeah. he is absolutely correct. Uh, this, will, this will prevent, uh, we will not be putting any septic tanks uh, within this 5,000 acre, a uh, little over 5,000 acre piece of property if this plan is approved. And, and keep in mind, just remember, if we don't get the village plan approved, the underlying comp plan designations are also not effective based on the, uh, the fine work that Sarah did in uh, drafting the ordinance. Yeah, thank you. All right, we're going to go ahead. Uh, public comment obviously is closed. Staff closing comments, anything you want to add, Lisa? No, ma'am. Excuse me, Ms. Wenzel. That's yeah. <laughs> um, it's back to you, Mark. Okay. Applicant rebuttal, anything you want to add? Uh, yeah, a couple of things, if I might. Uh, and I do want to go back. First of all, we're very excited about this project. I think this will be a wonderful project for the county. Um, I, I appreciate all the comments that were said. Um, by the commission um, in regard to that. And this is an opportunity that, frankly, will pass, in my opinion, if, if, this, uh, if this is not approved and we don't have the opportunity to move forward. We do have to do quite a bit of additional work in order to actually move forward, and that will come back to this commission. Uh, uh, and in regard to the workforce and affordable housing, it's, uh, first of all, that will be something that we'll be looking at as part of our village plan. Um, uh, the 10% is a minimum. Um, and I, it could very well be as part of a tiny house community as part of that. Uh, it may be mixed in with, as, and I think um, Mr. Gibellino uh, <coughs> indicated, he'd like to see it mixed in with the rest of the development, and it very well may be more than 10%. We're just not there. That, that's just the minimum, minimum we want to put in there. Uh, <clears throat> we, <laughs> as we talked about before, um, we're reserving 3.7 square miles of uh, ag open space property, and that does not include other open space and uh, uh, preserved areas within the project that we'll have to do, either because they're wetlands or there'll be parks or, or trails, that sort of thing. So it's a, that's a lot of property, uh, and we're very proud of that. Uh, the timing, uh, I think, is now. I think your opportunity is now, and I, I think it will disappear. Also, as you see what's going on in other places around this, this, pro this property, uh, particularly to the north and to the south, um, the timings now. Um, <clears throat> this is not moving the FDAB land. Um, you have control of that as what the properties in between are developed. And That's right. uh, so I have respect for this commission that you'll make the right decisions in that regard. Uh, we've talked, uh, there was talk about the water and sewer plant. I want to have Bob Lombardo come up just briefly and make a couple comments about that. <clears throat> 
Good afternoon, Commissioners. It's Bob Lombardo. I'm a consulting engineer. The, um, the commentary was uh, the risks of utility infrastructure, private utility infrastructure, was one of the concerns. Um, at the last hearing, I mentioned to you, um, specifically pointed out that the villages and Babcock Ranch mm. are enormous projects, yeah. started from nothing, have their own private utilities, their own private uh, wastewater treatment facilities. Uh, this is not uncommon for a very large project, which is exactly what we are. But, but the other concern that was mentioned about risks was the, the infrastructure. Your codes require that the sewer lines, the water lines, the reclaimed lines, the lift stations, all of that must be built to your standards. That's in your code. It is now. We have said on the record that we will build the water and sewer treatment plant to the appropriate standards at the time it's built. Right now, those appropriate standards are state standards, federal standards. I don't think the county has uh, standards like they do for water and sewer lines. I don't think the county has standards for a wastewater treatment facility. But we agreed we would build it to those standards and put, and put that on the record also to provide those assurances. Um, I also, uh, just to kind of wrap up a couple of things, uh, the school district was very happy with this project, especially when we moved the school site to the interior of the, the property. Uh, the recycling and, and trash, obviously, we're going to have to address that. Um, I think we will have both of those things. That's going to be something we're going to have to address. Uh, we've talked about the workforce housing. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know where the migrant housing discussion came in, but um, we will be providing workforce housing uh, on the property. We are required to do that, and uh, we will move forward with that. Um, as, far, as far as the solar farm, I think... It goes without saying, we're next to the largest solar farm in the world, so I've been told, uh, which I think is an appropriate place. I, I, by the way, I commend Babcock Ranch for what they did, but, um, and that is something we have talked about looking at as we move forward with the village plan, if it's, if it's appropriate, but, uh, but we are, again, next to the largest uh, solar uh, plant in the world. And with that, uh, uh, I'll be happy to answer any other questions you might have. All right. Um Commissioner Cruz, you're next, sir. I, I don't think we have any questions. That was just a rebuttal, correct? We're done? We're on deliberation? We're done. All right. Yes, deliberations. Right. Well, I make a motion for adoption of Plan Amendment PA-18-03 slash Ordinance 21-17. Second. All right, we have a motion to approve by Commissioner Cruz, a second by uh, Commissioner Bellamy. Commissioner Bellamy, did you want to make a statement now or wait until after the vote, sir? After Is the this, vote, Madam Chair. Okay, that's what I thought. All right, uh, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Nay. It is approved, Madam Clerk, six to one with Commissioner Servia one more uh, being nay. There's one more motion. Go ahead. All right. I'd like to make a motion for adoption of plan amendment PA 18 04 slash ordinance 21 18. Second. We have another motion by Commissioner Cruz, second by Commissioner Bellamy. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. It is approved, Madam Clerk, six to one with Commissioner Servia uh, opposing. All right. The only thing that I would like to add to this, uh, we do have a lot of properties. Uh, Bob, I appreciate what, you, what you're saying about the utilities. And, and we have had a lot of properties that have had their own utilities and then all of a sudden you know, they come in and they, they want the county to take it over and it has to be updated because it was maybe 20 years ago and so what they have is not up to where it needs to be. Do you guys have anything along that line that you're going to be looking at to try and keep it real quick? Um, I can't help but wonder because I'll tell you why. When I first got elected, that's the first thing that I had hit me was uh, Rosedale was looking to turn over their utilities to the county and it was bit of a situation. First of all, thank you very much uh, for, for the vote. We do appreciate it very much, and we are looking forward to working with the county uh, as moving forward on this project. Very excited about it. Um, uh, obviously, we're going to have to set up, um, you know, a, either a, 
CDD or, or several of them, right. stewardship district, all those things. We are required as part of that to maintain those facilities. Um, and, uh, and we have had many, uh, many great examples. Bob pointed out several of them that have been done exactly that way. We represent one uh, down in Charlotte County that's been that way for 30 years, and it's worked just fine, by the way. And I might add, with your comment, and I'm so glad you said that because I thought that's what you were going to say, uh, there is a property, a very large property out east that also had some of their own utilities, and some of those are now being turned over to the county, and you know what? It's, it's been very easy and simple because they have done just that. So thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Bellamy? Yes. Um, actually, when Commissioner Barr made a statement about the farmers selling their property because their children don't want to farm. Sad. <laughs> it is sad, but I can connect to it. Um, the, the, the Bellamy's and the McClure's did a lot of farming um, probably about 50, 60 years ago with my dad and his eight and his eight brothers. And I always tell my son, you know, you're very fortunate um, because you're one generation removed from the farms. Um, he, he did not touch the farms at all. And, um, I did have some experiences, but at that, but being the baby of my parents, seven kids, I didn't touch it as much as my older, um, siblings. So I can kind of connect with those, um, children that don't want to be a part of the farming, which is very unfortunate because that's our lifeline. Mm -hmm. Um, but there, there's a reality of to when property owners and their next steps on their life. Um, with their property and how they want to do things. Um, so I understand both statements, to be honest with you, from Commissioner Ball and um, Commissioner Servia. Um, but I do want to say this right here, um, and I said this to a developer I spoke with um, previously. It, it's time, and this is my position from this point on, um, that we look at affordable housing, workforce housing, and um, attainable housing, whatever housing you want to call it, um, with a different perspective. So um, coming in with the minimum, coming in with, with the minimum is, is something that I would ask developers and individuals that's coming in to give us a different focus lens. They help us really with an issue that's here in Manatee County. And as, as developers move forward um, and all the growth continue, um, I will echo a comment that he's made, but I will never use the, the, the tone that Glenn has. We love you though, Glenn. Glenn, you are Glenn and Reggie's Reggie. But who's doing that work, right? And we want to make sure that we are sensitive to that workforce community. And I'm talking about the, the laborers. And obviously, they need places to stay. But before these houses are built, they already have some places to stay. So it's kind of, you know, depends depend on how you look at it. But from my perspective, from my perspective, please look at the percentage from a different focus lens. And when things come back, you know, we we'll say, well, we know it. We we have a 10% requirement. You know, however, because there's a need in our community. Because our desire is for us to make sure we serve our community and, and impact all of our community. We have to make sure, and I think I'm going to do my one-seventh of a part of saying that we have to make sure that the developers or the individuals that's doing the development is a little bit more sensitive to the workforce, the affordable housing or the attainable housing um, need here, and look at that percentage, not necessarily for just selling for the minimum, but because there's an extreme need here in Manatee County, you know, I ask your engineers and I ask the people that's in your camp to bring us a little bit more back than just the minimum, and that would be very much well appreciated. Thank you. Good comments. Commissioner Whitmar. I, I had commissioner's comments, but on that, when I first started, you know, the boom was big time, and 25%, I remember, affordable housing and all the projects and then all of a sudden it kind of just disappeared then it went down to 15 or whatever but it did disappear uh, but during the boom that was a, a way that the development community could get projects approved but I just have other this, that's okay. all I have we'll, comments when, yeah. yeah when we get to that right um, thank you right. We're not on commissioner comments. We finished up this, so thank you for being with us. And <laughs> you're waiting. Now bring it back. Mark, Mark's on the clock. Ready for the next, the next stage. All right, we're going to go ahead right now and take a 10-minute recess. Just for comments. Okay.
I know, Sarah doesn't sound right, does she? All right, we are back uh, from recess. Commissioner Servia, did you have anything to add? Uh, no, not at this time. I did when the last item was up, but not at this time. I'll say I, I guess I need to look at the, at it, because every time when, you, when we vote on something and then you're there and I don't say it. Uh, Commissioner Whitmore. Just a few things. Remember the other day somebody asked us about our county logo, if we had any appetite to add a manatee someday to our logo. And we all went, oh, yeah, we were kind of tired. So I don't know if that's something that we ever want to discuss in the future or not. I had on my list. Does the board have any appetite? I mean, we are Manatee County. And all I see is that sailboat and the other one, you know. But that's our official one, I think. So I don't know. Uh, yeah, that's the seal. Yeah, yeah, I know. I mean, do we, what do you guys, do you want to talk about it sometime or you want to keep everything the same? I just promised this citizen I would bring it up. No, okay. Brainton City Council person didn't realize, didn't realize that uh, they mentioned to me that we needed to have a homeless shelter for veterans that I said, we are. <laughs> and it's at the jail and they were shocked. So obviously we're not communicating very well with the cities. So I don't know if you mentioned that, Mr. Administrator, in your, your newsletter that you do. Maybe we should send your newsletter to all the cities and their city commissioners so they can see what's going on in the county. I don't know if you had mentioned that in a previous one, but right there, that's a big communication breakdown. Yeah. And it's not getting down to the troops like the city council people, maybe the mayors, but that's it. Well, the, the, the big rollout will be at our uh, workshop on the ARP. Uh, I think it's going to be a special meeting on ARP the afternoon of the 4th of January. And I told them that I thought it was with those monies, but I wasn't sure. But I know. And, I've, disc and I've discussed it with the mayor of. Yeah, but they're Brayton. not telling the commission. Well, I mean, <laughs> okay. And then my last. Well, did you I don't interact with the elected officials. He's <laughs> really wanting okay. to say something. Oh, I'm sorry. But, but to that, but to that note, uh, in fact, Commissioner Cruz had suggested that we push <coughs> out the newsletter. Uh, and yeah, so we're, we're going meeting. to be pushing it out uh, so that uh, uh, my original intent was that, that you would push it out to your constituents, but we're, we're happy to just push it out. Yeah, because Cruz and I, you know, we don't, I only have an animal thing. I don't have a thing for the whole county, so. No, no, no we're, we're, we've started pushing out. Okay. And then a Judy Red sent me, I'm sure she probably sent all of you, an email or uh, about the water taxi she wanted. I don't, I, I've heard about it at meetings. I don't know what's going on with it, and I'm fine, whatever's going on with it. If it happens, it'll be a miracle, because we talked about it for years. But she wanted to know if there's going to be captains, safety, training, et cetera. I'm sure it's going to be somebody certified, but are you going out for bid and all that? So maybe somebody can give us an update <laughs> in the future. Because I didn't I didn't have one answer. I heard Brainton Beach said it at the TDC meeting the other day, but I don't even know what's going on. So maybe somebody on our briefings can tell us what's going on. Thank you, that's all I got. <laughs> Happy, oh, Merry Christmas. Commissioner Van Ostenbridge. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I would just like to wish everyone a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Commissioner Servia. Yeah, the same, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. There is a wreath laying ceremony at Mansion Memorial Park this Saturday. Mm. Uh, I will be there if anyone would like to join me. It starts at 11 o'clock. For what? Thanks. Wreath laying ceremony for the wreaths across America. Yeah, wreaths oh, across okay. America. Okay, I didn't know. Okay, Commissioner Satcher. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. There's a uh, a, a big uh, women's soccer game this evening between uh, Parish Community High School girls, uh, the Lady Bulls, and the uh, Palmetto Whoa. team. And so, Grudge, you'll be there. I think they're both, uh, yeah, grudge match. Um, no, not at all. ECHS <laughs> against PHS, right? But two, right, and two really great teams. And uh, so my, the, uh, I have a, a commitment that uh, I, I can't be there, so it's uh, been on my mind, but i uh, excited about that game and, and encourage everyone to uh, come out if they can. And uh, that's all. Thank you, Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. um, Commissioner Bellamy, Woo! I'm trying to keep you here as long as I can. <laughs> and, I, and I'm actually um, not in a, in a rush. I did want to make a comment about the, the veterans jail. It's um, not the veterans jail. got to call jail. it something other than the jail. Lord, we got to give yeah. it a name. I have an idea, but not right now. Um, but we've been working on that, and um, Lee has taken the lead, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of meetings that have taken place and that will um, continue to take place. 
But I, I think the position is it's an idea and we're moving forward with it. I would always like to secure everything before we make an announcement and make sure everything. <laughs> January fourth, right, <laughs> right, and and that and that's it's and that's probably why nothing has been heard at this particular point. But you know, that's just me. And if I walk down <laughs> Tennessee, they're bringing. I apologize. All righty, I'm excited about this, so I'm going to read this um, for immediate release. And um, you all know I have a basketball background. I'm doing nothing bad, sir. Gulf Coast Sports Group Incorporated announces the start <laughs> of 22 basketball season for Gulf Coast Lions professional basketball team. And they're having a press conference tonight <laughs> at 6 o'clock at Braden and Christian. That's where I, that's where I have to um, be off to. Got to go to Pound and come back. So I'm going to read the, um, the, the, the immediate for press release. And you know, I never do much stuff like this, but I'm excited for about it. It's basketball. The Gulf Coast Sports Group Incorporated is pleased to announce the introduction of the Gulf Coast Lions professional basketball team and the upcoming 2022 season. The team's 12 home games will be held at Braden and Christian School, um, located at 3304 43rd Street West, Braden and Florida. The press conference will be held at the Braden and Christian School on Thursday, December 16, 2021, at 6 p.m., and it's open to the community. I will not read everything else. For sure. But I know, you're right. The 22 season, but the end. The 22 season is from March to June 2022. Training camp will begin February 7, 2022 at the Brandon Christian School. The team will also hold trials in February for its new Gulf Coast dance team, which perform during games. I honestly think this is an exciting opportunity. I do expect for um, it to bring tours here. I think the league is... 32 different teams, wow. and um, they'll travel, mm -hmm. bike and forth, um, and obviously that should impact hotels, restaurants, and things of that nature. Um, I think when, when we were coming up, it was either the Sharks or the Stingers um, that played at the, um, at the Manatee Civic, at the Civic Center, and I don't know whether or not this league is, you know, wants to go there. I want them to go there. I go on the record to say that, because anytime we can have basketball in our community, I am excited about it, so that's me. Those are my commission comments. And Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to everyone. Thanks for thanks to the staff, everything that you all do. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Whitmore, don't you have something to yeah, add? Yeah, I'm sorry. I forgot. Uh, uh, I'm sure you all have heard of Lapensi Plumbing. You've heard it throughout the months. I've told you about Greg Lapensi, and he uh, passed away yesterday from COVID. He'd been 122 days in Alabama and 90 days at Blake. And he finally got to – his kids went up to see him on – Thanksgiving for the first time, and he just passed away a couple days ago. So 39, no pre-existing. He was on event. He was going to have to have a lung transplant probably. I'm just, I mean, the whole community is devastated. So I just wanted to, you know, I know a lot of people in this community know them and the family. I just want to give my condolences. Sorry. Forgot that. Commissioner Bellamy. Okay. So... I do want to make sure that it's identified that the community has lost a great individual in the transition of Eddie Starlin. Um, he's a former MCO deputy, and he's better, more known for representing um, the Police Athletic League and the um, football. However, he just was a man's man in our community um, and done so much and touched so many lives. I, I probably will stumble through it, and Kevin, please, you know, speak on it also. But to their to their family and to the PAL um, af athletic family and everyone that 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 knew um, Eddie Starling, I just want to make sure we extend our condolences and go from there. Commissioner Van Ostenbridge. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, I, I would just add to one. I graduated with Greg Lipinski and obviously knew him well. Um, and my condolences go out to that family. Um, and to Coach Starling, to, to me, he's Coach Starling. He coached at Southeast High School for, gosh, over 20 years. He uh, was a part of several state championships there. And he touched the lives of countless youth um, over at Southeast and then ran the Police Athletic League Youth Football Program and touched the lives of countless youth. But in, in there, he didn't just – wasn't just youth, but he was sort of mentoring coaches, you know, and teaching, teaching men how to coach kids. Um, and what a personality. I mean, the guy had just a giant personality. And, you know, you hear this a lot, but Coach Starling literally had a smile on his face all the time. He was like one of the most jovial people you'd ever meet. Um, 
and it's a terrible loss. Of course, served our community as a detective um, <coughs> with the sheriff's <laughs> office as well. Um, and Coach Starling's a terrible, terrible loss for our community, but he was a, he was a giant in the community as well. So my condolences go out to, to Starlings. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Cruz? Yeah, I'll, I'll start by wishing everyone Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Nice to have a little break. Uh, that's kind of, but th th what I really want to talk about here uh, is we, we finally found a situation where we made a vote where I had both the president of a Republican club and the head of the Women's Voices of Southwest Florida both call me to complain. <laughs> we, I had Republicans and Democrats. I had developers and people from MIACA. Um, I, I just want to, I, I just want to, because we're going away for two weeks, and so I, I want to clear the record here. It, it's not so much where the vote for chair went, it was the implication that it was on me. I was accused of not doing my job. I was accused of refusing the position. Glenn's over here smiling and shaking his head. He's heard it. People assumed I stepped away from the obligation just last year when we voted Commissioner Ball in. Commissioner Whitmore specifically said the standard practice is vice chair moves up. I had every intention of moving up without sounding presumptuous. I assumed I was going to move up. So this wasn't a situation where I stepped aside for Commissioner Van Osterbridge. It wasn't a situation where I refused the chair position anyway. This was, you know, a, a very well done, orchestrated steamroll of a, of, of a vote because we had one person who says they honor the process, who closed the nominations extremely quick, and one person who always complains, including today, that commissioners do not get an opportunity to speak and always complains that we call the question without everyone having an opportunity to say their piece. So it was what it was. We were all kind of taken back by it. Uh, if you listen to the YouTube, I think maybe three people actually voted. This is like 2020. Like, uh, based on the newspaper articles, it sounds like four votes were found at three in the morning to make it unanimous. Uh, but it was what it was. Uh, you know, he, he's chair. I'm going to respect Commissioner Van Osterbridge's chair. But I just want to set the stage that this was not a situation where I refused the chair because I've been accused of it by a lot of people in these past 48 hours. And that's not the case. I, I, I respect this job. I would have respected that job. I personally just want the record to show I did not vote on Tuesday for this chair position, as I think was pretty obvious because I turned down the vice chair position afterward. I, I just want it to be known that, you know, some people elected the chair, some people did not, and I want the record clear moving forward going into 2022. Thank you. Commissioner Whitmore. And I'm, I'm sorry. I, I have been vice chair and not been elected chair a couple times, actually, so... And unfortunately, the newer commissioners probably didn't know. I, and I never had an intention of vote. I, I looked on who I could support for chair. I knew it would never be me. I knew it would probably never be Reggie or Misty. And I knew it would be, I had to figure out on one of the four. Um, with my history last, with, yeah. With my history last year, what happened to me, financial stress on what happened to me, publicly embarrassed what happened to me, I, I had to nominate um, Mr. Uh, Van, uh, Van Osterbridge. And I agree with, with Commissioner Cruz on a lot of stuff he does. We're, we're in sync, but uh, personally, you know, I had to pick somebody that I could not, I couldn't pick, I couldn't pick anybody but Mr. Um, Van just, just, That's to, all just, to say. just to clarify, because she's calling me out directly. I, I'm not yeah, accusing anyone. It, it could be. You accused me of fraud. Accused I, I, me of I'm blackmailing saying. you. I, that's all I have to say. I'm leaving. Yeah, but right. that's the only reason why I didn't nominate you. You might not want to leave just yet. No, I'm no, leaving. Uh, look, I, I don't care. It could have been six one. I'm not arguing the vote. I, I'm not arguing Commissioner Van Osterbridge being chair. I will call him chair. I will work well with him, and I think he'll be a decent chair. That's not my argument whatsoever. You have every right to choose Kevin over me. You have every right to choose anybody you want over me. I personally don't care. It, it, it literally is not hurting my feelings that you didn't want me to be a chair. All I was saying was all of the articles, all of the quotes are saying it's unanimous and I am getting called out for it. I am just setting the record straight that it was not unanimous and I did not turn down the position of chair. It was nominated, it was closed, it was voted on with very few people actually having an opportunity to speak. It went very fast during the course of that, a little unprofessional. In fact, if you look at some of the other votes that happened, there were literally people who were nominated and in the same breath, the person making the nomination closed the nomination. 
we need to be a little bit more professional. These are, if we want to treat these as important positions, we need to have the elections in a meaningful, professional way going forward and not just jokingly laugh and start shutting down nominations instantly without giving anyone and everybody an opportunity to be a candidate and be nominated and vote you know, in, in a professional, Robert Rules of Order manner going forward on this board. Thank you. Commissioner Servio. Yes, um, just a few comments. I, George, I appreciate your underscoring professionalism and processes and all of those things. Thank you very much for that. I have been either participating on this board for the last three years or watching this board for the last 30 years and working with them. And what happened uh, during the vote is extremely common. Mm -hmm. Happens a lot. So it is brand new to you. I understand that. It is not uncommon for the vice chair not to roll into the chairman role. Um, and when I heard Kevin Van Ostenbridge's name nominated, I actually was pretty excited because I have seen a lot of growth in Kevin this year. I see a lot of enthusiasm. Um, I, I just thought it was a really good choice. So that's why I acted the way I did. It was completely legal. It was completely professional. And it was not at all a slant to anyone else, but rather support for someone who I thought, thought would be a very good chair. Um, Kevin, I have to say, um, I look forward to your leadership next year. And, and I really appreciated when your press release came out that you um, talked about the ACE philosophy, you know, accountability, civility, and ethics. Because those things are very important. We ask our staff to abide by that. And I can't think of anything that's more important. So I look forward to your leadership w with those standards at the forefront. This was not in any way uh, a slam against any other person up here, but rather support for Kevin Van Osterbridge. Thank you. Commissioner Whitmore. And again, um, the other's done with what I'm gonna say, but every year, if you watch the previous meetings, or the, the elections, this happens, yeah. except when Chip Shores was here. It was run differently. And the last time, I, uh, I was nominated real fast, and then Commissioner Baugh nominated Betsy, and Betsy wanted it, and so she got it. But I mean, that's how it happens. It, it, and in all due respect, I swear, if you go look at previous on tape, you will see, because I already made my mind what I who I was going to do. I even, um, at my board preparation, uh, when it, that item came up, I had told staff who I was going to nominate for chair. I mean, I've told my friends, they've asked me, but nobody up here, but, you know, I had n never made a secret of it. I don't do that. I don't break rules. But again, we could go back to chip, I mean, to the clerk of the court runs the last meeting for elections. And actually, I think only, it, was, it was only a few times when I was in office when CHIPS did it, and it did go slower. So I understand Commissioner Cruz's frustration, but that is how it has run now. So it's up to the board if they want to do that in the future, have the clerk of the court chair it for the last, you know, the election of officers. Commissioner Van Ostenbridge. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Second. You're, gonna no, oh, you're not going to skip the, me this time. You're right. I apologize. Oh, okay. Who's on the board? Okay. Not happening. I withdraw my motion. Thank you. All right. I'm next on the board, and I'm evidently I've waited until last, like I always do. And so I've heard all these comments. Okay. I. I think I've watched that video of the meeting, our last meeting with the election of the chair. I bet I've watched it 10 times. Because I've been on this board longer than you, Misty. I know how things get done on this board. OK, so don't preach to me. Just listen to me. I've got the floor. What I saw, I find I was trying to think. Reggie, of some of the words that you said, how you felt when you were looking at those maps, when you felt they were so unfair and that we had done wrong by you, I try and I couldn't think, I couldn't find it. So I'm sorry. Still there, it hasn't gone okay, well, <laughs> that's good because I'm going to add to it. Okay, I'm going to add to it. She was going to be on the other foot. 
what I saw did not look appropriate to me. And I've been on this board, Misty, longer than you. Carol, I'm next to you, and I've been through it, but I've never seen a chair's position be done the way this one was. A motion's made. Somebody else gets the floor, because they're, on the, they're on, the, on the screen. I get it. Well, you can either second my motion, or you can just, you know, uh, close nominations. Oh, I close nominations. Okay, done. Oh, second. You know what? Nobody had a chance on this board to say a word. It looked orchestrated to me. I felt like it was planned. And I, no one in the, up on this dais loves Commissioner Van Ostenbridge more than me. No one. And I think he will make a great chair. I wholeheartedly support him. What I don't support is the way it was done and the way it looked to the community because I also have gotten call after call after call. Nobody liked it. You can laugh all you want, but it's the truth. It will reflect on you, not me. So I am going to ask the county attorney to help me with this because I'm going, I want to do a reconsideration of my vote on this item, not taking away from our new chairman in any way, shape, or form, just how it was done by the two of you. And I can say that all I want, and I can do exactly Kevin, this. You are totally wrong. Well, you can call it whatever you want, but that's how a lot of people see it. Mr. County Attorney, what do I need to do? Um, Madam Make Chair, sure it's appropriate. this would be governed by Rule 5.5.6.4 of your procedures, routine consider reconsideration, and you would move to reconsideration, reconsider your the vote. election of the Chair of Board of County Commissioners for the year 2022. That would require an adoption by a majority of the board. It would require four votes in order for the motion to pass before we could revisit the nomination and approval of Commissioner I Van can't Ossibus. just automatically change my vote. It won't change the outcome no, you by not. any means. You have to go through the whole Well, process. it won't happen, but let the record show I am protesting the way it was done by these two commissioners. I guess then that's it. So, Commissioner, I looked forward to you being chair, but not this way. All right, Commissioner Servia. Are we done with this meeting? I hope. Are we? You're on the, yeah. you're on the, did you want to say something? Or do you want I, me to move on? I move to adjourn the meeting. Second. Well, I'm going to go ahead and, Commissioner Whitmore, you're on there. You yeah, have I, I don't want to be in kindergarten anymore. I'm leaving. Oh, please. Bye. It's been all year. Yeah. Commissioner Bellamy, did you have something to add, sir? <sighs> See ya. Please. <sighs> go away. <sighs> we got to vote. We've got to take the vote to adjourn. Yeah, there's oh, a motion I'm sorry. on the floor that's voted. been okay. seconded. So. so, do you want me to talk after the vote? Or? There was. Commissioner no, wait a minute. I didn't, I didn't hear a second. It's an adjournment vote, so oh, yeah, we right. will adjourn after I talk. So you better talk now. You can deliberate the motion. You don't have to cut off debate. No one's called the question. I can deliberate the motion? Yes, sir. I mean, we can talk about it, or we can call the question. So. Just today. Right. So this is to all y'all. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> yeah. Lord, please forgive me. I can't believe where we are right now. I'm not understanding this. And I'll be the first one to say that I'm a little disconnected from a lot of the things that take place. I'm, I'm the only D that's here, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> so I'm, a, I'm a little disconnected on it. Um, but when, when, it, when, it, when it took place, when everything took place, and normally when these votes happen, I just sit here. And, and the reason why I sit here is because I don't want to be in the middle of this constant debating and arguing. How does this help me move District 2 forward? Amen. How does this help me move District 2? And it's no dis. Hey, look, I care with G a lot, and I care with Kevin a lot. And I got a lot of respect for both of them. In this situation, this, this is embarrassing mm -hmm. to me. This, this is embarrassing to me, and... If I'm handling it don't, the wrong way, Kevin, I apologize in the same way, George. But my, my, my position on how it took place, the last two times when they voted for the chair, I don't, I don't know whether I responded then because it goes so fast, right? 
and then you vote and everything like that. Um, but we keep saying we are going to come together. Won't happen like that. But well, and and, and, and I'm glad you you said that because what I want to do from Reggie's perspective is continue to display a different type of humility. Because I don't agree with everything that you all say and do up here. I am not a happy commissioner on how my district was just taking place. Right. What took place in my district. I didn't fall out. I didn't start arguing at people because I have a responsibility to make sure that I represent District 2 to the best of my ability and make sure I represent Manatee County. And it's starting to be a little bit frustrating that we knick-knack and we freaking argue about everything. And it's embarrassing. I will say this right here. Not only is probably the League of Women Voters, the Republican Party, the GOP, which I didn't even know what that was until he told me this morning, the NAACP, all these people that are listening, our kids are listening too. This is the way we govern our county. The people that's coming for jobs, they're listening also. The people that want to bring business here, they're listening also. How about we go over the holidays and adopt a sense of civility and make sure when we come back, we perform at a higher level of professionalism. Can I be dismissed now, sir? Can we go? Or you may leave at any time. I call the question and adjourn the meeting. It's up to y'all. Second. One thing about it, you can't stop from going to my truck. Wait, we got to go to the go to I can show you, but I can show you. Let the police arrive. Question's been called. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. He voted. It. He said aye. Arrest me. Well, no, you don't have to vote. So the question's been called, Madam Chair, so the next step is to move <laughs> to, the, to the, the motion. The motion All in favor of debate. adjourning this meeting? Aye. 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 All opposed. It's adjourned. <laughs>